the beginning, there was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. I gotta get away with this. No! Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes I cry. Miss my butthole, he laughed. From the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective, here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Drunken Peasants Podcast. This is episode 1229. Doing it live on a special Monday episode. We don't normally do Monday episodes. So that's what makes it special. We got Vito back again. Welcome back, Vito. Hey, how's it going, fellas? It's going great. Great to have you back. Uh, you know, one one thing I was wondering now that we have you, how's your super killer comic going? We have raised now over $75,000 on Indiegogo. Ooh, amazing. Which is a, a court. Well, in my book, very happy. According to Eric July's followers, Vito is a pathetic failure who could only raise $75,000 for his well, shitty comic book. Imagine, imagine once you put this comic book out, you will have been able to do what Eric July did for a fraction of the price. Makes you already a better <laughs> businessman. Yeah, I didn't have to buy a warehouse. And, uh, for real? Yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, sorry. I, I only got seven... Uh, How many runner grand. vans did you buy to make yeah. that comic? Oh, I didn't buy any runner vans. I for just, real? Yeah. I don't understand how many employees did you hire? And then just me and the guy who draws it and like another guy who colors it. Uh yeah, Eric July is throwing all his money away. It's really crazy and weird. Yeah. Uh, well, here's why it's interesting to me. I keep getting people and they're like, why do you care about what Eric July is doing? I'm like, well, because it's the intersection of dumb like conservatives throwing their money at a bad thing just to prove a point to the liberals like look look we'll, we'll buy this thing just because it pisses you off and we're like all right man if that's cool sure but it's also the intersection of the comic industry has like a uh, oh, a long history of spectacular failure of people losing millions upon millions of dollars trying to make comic books a thing and Eric July is making, like, all the same fucking mistakes that, like, all these comic companies made in the 90s. I'm like, look at our foil cover and our lenticular boy. And you're like, well, is the, is the story good? And it's like, don't, no, don't worry about that. Look at all this bullshit. And you're like, okay. Because it kind of just seems like you're spending all your money on a fucking warehouse you don't need. And the comic's not even good. And, like, there's no way to sell it beyond to your simps. Like, you're not going to grow this audience. So, yeah, it's the this audience. intersection of things I love to talk about. The audience doesn't even care if, you know, when the next book comes out. They barely read the first one from what I've seen. Dude, some of them, I saw one guy be like, oh, I'm so glad, uh, you know, the second one's coming out because I bought the first one, but, you know, I kept it sealed in plastic because I don't want to ruin the collector's value. <laughs> so now that the second one's coming out, I'll buy an extra copy of the first one. That'll be my copy I can read. And I'm like, why are you such a big fucking fan of a thing you haven't even read uh, yeah, I, a lot of them have not read it. Look at this. It's really weird. This is now, a single, okay. this is a single order right here. <laughs> they got, they got two copies of the, of each cover graded. It looks like one set is signed by Eric July and then they have the loose issues. They have two of each on the bottom. Yeah. They, they got those 9.8s in. Now That's keep gonna... this on the screen. Cause this is very important is, uh. I think that the most telling indicator of, of Eric July is running out of money is like when you start doing things that are like obviously a desperate scam to take advantage of your biggest pay pigs. So the normal the, the first two covers you see there, those are thirty five bucks each at the bottom, right? Okay. That foil cover Again, there's nothing else different. The only thing different here it doesn't come with like a trading card or a sticker or like something cool. All, it's just the cover is shiny. For that, the price jumps up to 100 American dollars wow. for a single issue of a comic book with a shiny cover. 
And now these ones he's got here that are graded, that are sealed in plastic, so you're not allowed to read them. Which, whatever, I get it. Some collectors, they want to have a pristine, fine. Okay, a 9.8 graded copy. I think those, if it's the foil one, I want to say we're like, must have been an extra 100, 150 bucks to get the man's signature on it and to get it encased in plastic. And, like, this is why Eric July got that deal at Comic-Con with that table, which is like a grading company, right? They must have (laughs) cut a deal with each other. Well, he probably bulk ordered a bunch of stuff, and they're like, yeah, come sit at our Comic-Con table. But it's not hard to get a Comic-Con table. No. It's, it's everybody's like you. I don't see anybody else with the. With <laughs> the, the haters are so authority. mad. They're so mad. They 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 talk about that more than how good the comic is. They're like, yeah, this is gonna make them all mad. The haters are gonna be so mad now. It's because yeah. anger beget anger, and they were all born out of anger. They all became fans of Eric July because they were angry at old comic books. Yes, and they can only continue being fans of Eric July if they have a reason to continue being angry. And they can't get angry uh, at him. <laughs> it really is indicative of a sad period in human culture where because people feel so powerless over their own lives, the only way they think to strike at the heart of their ideological enemies is to give their money away to some jackass for his uh, counter cult or whatever this is, culture war totem artifact. It's not that's that's why I'm going nuts is people are like, you know, his biggest simps are like, Eric's about to change the game. The comic companies have something to learn from this. And I'm like, what possible fucking lesson could you learn from this? Go find a big black libertarian influencer and just let him do whatever he wants because then people will buy his book because they hate the fucking libs. I I don't think that's a viable strategy for Spider-Man. I do think they could. I do think they could learn from that, though. Yeah, they could. They could let the Punisher (laughs) break free from Marvel. Mm. And and then say we we don't want this character we don't want him we, we disavow him and then have some other company pick him up, but it's really them under a shadow company and they make it super right wing and the yeah and it's the exact have... same sale model but it's super <laughs> right wing Punisher yeah and you keep saying he, well this is the not woke Punisher we bought it secretly <laughs> yeah page yeah. ninety seven he says the isom word. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was uh, I was asking a bunch of uh, Ripperverse fans if they think that Isom gets his powers from Jesus, and they're like, "We don't know. We haven't found out yet." But what would be wrong with that if it was? And I'm like, "Well, it's just a stealth way of promoting Christianity, then, isn't it?" Uh, if yeah, the fact that they can't see how cringe it would be if Isom is genuinely a Christ-powered superhero. Kind of tells you what you're dealing with. Exactly. Uh, and it also, again, that, that picture with all the books or yes. whatever, that's why there's no future for this comic. Is Eric goes like, look, I sold 20, you know, how many copies of the comic? 10,000 issues or something? Yeah. And you go, yeah, but like here we can see 20 of those went to a guy. Like your actual <laughs> audience is, does not match the number of books you're selling. Like, real comic companies don't just want to sell... 20 books to one guy because that's not a viable sales model that doesn't like you can't do that more than once or twice i don't even know again this is isom why is this guy going hard in the paint for isom too <laughs> shouldn't you be investing in the in the first appearance of isom but uh i don't know this is just fascinating to watch he's got what two weeks left on the campaign uh and again he might hit 2.5 million but he's just pissing the money down a, down a well Okay, he's got like 12 full-time employees. He has like three social media guys whose only job, it seems, is to go on Twitter and fight with me and you guys. (laughs) I'm like, is that all you guys do? How is this social media management? Go, go. What what is your job exactly? Uh, All right, guys. It's Monday. Wake up. Time to. Time to uh, Time fight to... the detractors. <laughs> we have the a detractors. weird. We have a weird theory about the Ripaverse goalposts account because they're almost like a fan of us because they're in our chat almost every episode that we do live. Yeah. And they hung out with us Saturday night, and they got like they were fans of like the other content too. They were like, "So this Cobra guy, is he a lol cow?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think- he. 
Paul Post is just fucking around. I think it's just a guy yeah. who's having fun at this point. Yeah, I think he's stirring both sides of the pot and just watching the, the, the flame burn. I there like him. A, so here's where I got confused, though. So there was, like, a period of time where I'm pretty sure there was, like, an order on high. Because for the longest time, Ripper vs. Goalposts and also all the employees were, like, mad at me and Dick. And they wouldn't shut up about us. Like, literally every day they were posting about us. Fuck these guys, blah, blah, blah. And anything we tweeted, they would quote tweet it and be like, Ugh. And then it all, like, one day it just all stopped. Like, on the same day. Including the Ripper vs. Goalposts account, which does not work for Eric July, theoretically. And I honestly believe, and I had somebody uh, say that, yes, this did happen. That, like, Eric was like, listen, uh, fighting with these guys is not working. Uh, they're actually, like, pointing, at, you know, attention at the fact that pages are missing from our book and, and <laughs> spelling errors everywhere. Or Have you seen the fight scene where they jump at each other and then the, the scene where, like, they actually punch each other? It just seems to be clearly missing. I'm like, I think you missed a page. Yeah. Maybe even two pages. I think you missed... I think there's two pages missing an ice on it. He just doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. I think this guy's in contact with Eric. And I think Eric tried to be like, listen, man, uh, these guys are kind of fucking up. I had a good grift going, and these guys are uh, <laughs> kind of doing some damage to it. So well, You know those pages missing is canon, right? Well, what do you mean? Well, You, you know that, that guy that we thought was a complete ripoff of The Watcher? Yeah. He's actually... One level above, he's the Ripper, and he rips pages out of the book. And there's going to be a Ripper, <laughs> That's a Ripper verse book that comes out with all the missing pages. Is going to make these shit books actually genius. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. The Ripper actually goes in and rips out important pieces. Yeah. Yes. Climate, yeah. Fight scenes. Because I can't think of any other reason it's called the Ripperverse. You know what else the Rippa does? <laughs> the Rippa rips rings off of characters' fingers and then puts them back on in the next panel. See, like, and that's the thing is, like, at this point, it's like, Eric, look, we're, you, you've made this too much fun. Like, normally I wouldn't, like, talk about shit like that. But the fact that he's, like, so upset that anyone makes fun of any part of his comic... That now you just want to pick the whole fucking thing apart because you know it's eating at him inside. He's like, I'm the greatest comic creator ever, and I don't understand why I get no respect. And it's like, well, you got one panel where a guy's got three rings, and the next panel he's got none, and then he's got two. And that seems like a mistake. <laughs> he's got this character, Goodying. Have you seen this? Where no. we can't figure out how you're supposed to spell Goodying because he spells it differently on every different page. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I didn't <laughs> see that. Okay. On the cover, it says, introducing the new character... Goodying, but it's spelled uh, G O O D Y N G. It's a really weird looking word. But then inside, it's spelled Goodying with an I, like Goodying. But then also on the same page where it's spelled with an I, it's spelled again without the I. And so we're like, <laughs> it's spelled on the same page, it's spelled two different ways. So we, and so now the new thing is anytime anybody's like, we love Isom too, we're like, can you tell us if his name's Goody? Or Goody Ng with an I. Like, it doesn't <laughs> matter. You spell it both ways. I'm like, I think it does matter. She I think she's got the best possible comic. You can't even remember how like his character's names are spelled. I think it's beautiful that this comic is so terrible. I think that these fans that are willing to put oh. their hate money behind it deserve this level of entertainment. Yes. I, I, I think that that's the beautiful uh idiocy of it all i like it i like it. i'm well, a fan of uh, i'm a fan of this book being so shitty because i would never fucking buy it really but have you guys read his transparency update from january where he talks about exactly how much money he's throwing away didn't he delete it <laughs> too eventually yeah so, well here's what he said happened he says we updated the website and when we updated the website it set all our old posts to private and i'm like all right i'm willing to buy that explanation i guess uh, but it's still, dude, uh, I don't know if you guys know Ethan Van Shiver, the guy who used to make, do the Green Lantern cartoon, sorry, Green Lantern comics, yeah. and now he did a cover for ISOM, but he's kind of like in the middle, because like, he watches our podcast too, he likes me and Dick, so he's kind of like there, and he's like, well, Eric, you know, some of the shit they're saying is true, also, why did you give everybody your financial numbers, what the fuck are you doing, don't tell people how much money you're spending on what the consumer doesn't need to know that. And it's true. Cause these numbers are embarrassing. Have you got he, that? He spent, he says he spent $350,000 on payroll roll for one quarter. Mm. Jeez. 
you're uh you're, you're talking about Ethan Van Shiver, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, he was like uh Eric was like trying to talk about like I don't even care like we put out these numbers because the, the customer deserves to know how much money we're spending. And Ethan's like, I'm never going to give those numbers to my cousin. This is fucking stupid. Why the fuck would you give <laughs> this shit? You know, like he admits that he printed. Okay. So I saw him number one. He sold 40,000 copies, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah. you sell $40,000 worth of, of comics during a big crowdfunding campaign. You know that's the bulk of the comic you're going to sell, right? Like, after that, you might get some trickle-in orders over time. Maybe you'll sell a couple thousand more books, you know, down the line. But that was your big crowdfunding campaign, and there was all the hoopla and the news coverage, you know. Like, from there, okay, your sales are pretty much dead in the water. I saw number one. The amount of money you're going to get out of it is gone. Uh, Eric says in his transparency update... Uh, we chose to print an additional 50,000 copies of ISOM number one at a cost of $125,000. So after selling 40,000 copies, this dummy somehow got it in his head that, well, it's only going to keep selling from here. I will sell more than the amount I sold during my giant campaign. But I need 50, when you thousand extra copies on when it. you when you print, sometimes you do get breaking points. Uh, yeah. If you if you buy double the amount, it'll cost only slightly more than the original half you were going to pay for because of the price breaks for bulk purchasing. So maybe it was like an extra. It was one hundred twenty five thousand dollars for that. Maybe it was only an extra twenty grand. It was extra twenty grand. No, it caught well an extra twenty grand. This was this was a separate order. The only way he would have saved money on this is if he was also printing ISOM number two at the same time. But ISOM hmm. number two wasn't ready. It's possible he finagled some weird deal and yeah. said, why don't you give me an extra 50000 and then cut me you know, this much of a price? But the point is, uh, he's got all that stock just sitting in his warehouse. You don't want oh, yeah. to have with a bunch of shelves holding product that you cannot sell. He will not sell another 50,000 copies of the... Con if, if, he, if he's... Tries to sell another 50,000 copies, it's going to take him 10 years to sell through that. But you I mean, also can't compare him to the rest of the comic book industry because nothing about this is a, a, a real like business model of based in success. This has always been a reactionary impulse to, to angry people. And yeah. it, 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 he thinks he's like this big businessman. He's just a snake oil salesman. This is... It's, isom, isom, it's confusing. I want to know if he knows he's a snake oil salesman. Well, I like, think that's what ISO ooh, stands for, question. right? Well, here's it's, the thing. It's snake oil, man. I don't think that... Okay, Isom comes out, right? And he's got all his little YouTuber buddies. And, you know, all they can do is make endless videos about Eric's going to change the game. He's a fucking genius. This is going to be the greatest comic that ever happened. And then me and Dick Masterson, two fucking idiots with a podcast, we show up and we go, well, this is fucking dog shit. Like, and we read it. And here's yeah. like a breakdown of like how much dog shit it is. And I think that Eric might be a guy who is like literally living in this bubble where he's like, yeah, writing comics is easy. You just come up with a character and have punch guys. And, you know, and I got all these cool plans down the line, but rather than incorporate them smartly into this hundred page you know, arc. I'll just have all these fucking mysteries I set up and not deliver on any of them. Uh, basically, he's like the J.J. Abrams of shitty uh, culture war comics. <laughs> like, ooh, where'd he get his powers? What are his powers? Uh, wh where'd he come from? I don't know. We'll fu Here's a hundred fucking pages that don't tell you fucking anything. Exactly. Uh, Instead of a lens flare, he's got a cross above this guy's <laughs> dick. Yeah, where'd that cross come from? Who gave him the cross? Did Jesus give him personally that that suit? I want to know. So. I don't think I don't know if this guy has just been living in a bubble where everybody tells him he's a creative genius, uh, but he's a marketing genius, maybe by accident. I don't know. I think that's on purpose. I think he knows how to market it. It's maybe, the, maybe, but he's the, part. The he's, yeah. he's he was part of the blaze. Like th they already have the people drinking the Kool Aid built in. Yes, all they he did, and, and these people. They These did a segment on Fox News like a year ago, too. They got like their own segment with uh, Brian yeah. Kilmeade on Fox News. Him yeah. and his uh, colorist yeah. uh, were both on there. Who uh, happens to be a fat? Who happens to be fat? It's funny how when people are fat or like 
like nerdy looking. He's okay when they're paying him, but when they want to yeah. debate him, he won't. They they have to pass an obstacle course first. You literally Jim, can't Jim look at this comic Jim book without going through the fingers of a fat. He's a fat. <laughs> Yeah, there's chicken grease in the ink of these books. Look at look. <laughs> he's a fat. Look yeah. at this dude. This is a this is an Eric July fan. Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Luke Targets. So Eric July's Isom number two has passed 1.8 million dollars in pre-orders, with plenty of time left for him to get that campaign to pass or get closer to the 3.7 million dollar precedent <laughs> no. of his not first not campaign. This unprecedented success in the independent comics of the social media age is anything but something to ignore or to shake a stick at. And that goes quadruple for the lack of Air July coverage on. This guy is is a self-professed artist. And I went to some of his like, like his Instagram page and everything. He's j- just slightly above Chris Chan level art. Well, that's autism art, right? Like. <laughs> This is, you this, said it, we, not we, me. Well, that, but there's a lot of autistic people who make really childish art and think is beautiful. And I, I, I mean, that's fine. That's part of their mental divide from what makes real beautiful art beautiful and other art, you know, expression. They're just expressing. This is the ismtism. Ism number two came out. They got to draw, do their drawings too. <laughs> ism. <laughs> I like ism. It's my favorite character. Yep. <laughs> I read Ism too, and he's very powerful. Uh, it's, it's fine that he's autistic, but it's it's a it's a key factor in why he these guys affix on all the numbers. They they they're rain oh, manning all the numbers. Bro, yes, honestly, I talked to Dick, and I'm like, I think Eric July must be some form of autistic because let's be clear. Okay, I'm making a comic book, and when people ask me about it, I'm like, man, I'm so excited about this character, and I got this plot line, and this. You know, what I, if you ask Eric July what he's excited about with his comic, he goes, I just got a big old warehouse and it's got a forklift and the forklift goes up and down and you can stack boxes on top of other boxes. And I have in that warehouse 1,223 boxes and I'll just move them around and stack them. I think he just wants to play warehouse simulator. He wants to play pretend business owner. Like, I don't think I, I don't even think he cares about comics. I think he'd be happy selling fucking jump ropes and other fucking tchotchkes. Just so happens that, you know, he's good at Telling everybody their comic books suck because the liberals are making them, and uh, I guess they thought that you can just get a guy, you know, shows up and does the opposite. I guess makes them really boring and takes anything, all, <laughs> takes any amount of conflict or politics out of them. So they take all the politics out of my comics. I just want a black guy who runs around beating up security guards, uh, and his fans are autistic too. Because again, they're all fucking autistically obsessed over how much money he made. It's never like man. You know what I love about I Sama? I love this character. Here was my favorite plot point. Blah, blah, blah. They just go, did you see how much money it made? It made more money than this comic book. That's what he's got, made- like, yeah, in the first few book. minutes of this guy's video, that's all he's talked about so far. Yeah, the other one does that, too. Yep. Every time that I see them go to the numbers, I'm like, tell me the number of stories in this book that are worth talking about. Because the, the the ones I've seen is that he goes to save a girl and then get, doesn't care about the girl, so he he picks a fight with some guy for smudging his puma. That's like the one story. <laughs> and then and then and then the, there's one. The only superpower it's been confirmed or denied he has is it's denied he in the book it says he doesn't have flying. And then you got the fans that can't even tell you that. The actual fans are, what is it? He flies. It's like, that's literally the one power they confirmed he didn't have. It's so stupid. And I guess that's the other thing is people are like, well, why do you care? And I'm like, I wouldn't if a bunch of people weren't lying. When a bunch of people go, this guy is the next Stan Lee. Like, literally, you can go on YouTube and there are YouTubers, like huge guys. With like 500,000 subscribers, a million subscribers. And the title of the video is Marvel and DC Comics are scared of the Ripperverse. And I'm like, that's, <laughs> they, don't, they are not scared of the Ripperverse at all. They don't care. They don't want to make comics like this. They don't want, and it, the amount of money he's making is like trivial compared to the scale of their fucking organization. Some influencer, okay, that's like, that's like saying Hershey's is jealous of Mr. Beast's fucking Feastables bar. They don't care. <laughs> It's a different market. They aren't making this fucking celebrity-focused uh, goods. 
okay? That the people are buying it out of some weird pseudo fucking uh, what do you call it? What is whatever relationship? Parasocial. Uh, yeah. Social relationship connection to the guy. I just put a video in the Skype chat. Okay. Uh, look at this guy real quick and tell me that these guys do not have a parasocial relationship with their their fucking internet dad. Well, they have to give him money because they love him. The laboratory of mayhem. Huh. Let's let's see Father, what this is all about here. Okay. Father Eric, can we have an ISOM number two now? I remember this guy had one of the first reviews of ISOM number one, and everyone said, oh, it must be good. This Hold guy up. Had, like, is this a, a character that Dick plays? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is an actual guy. This is, is, happens to be another Masterson. Andy Masterson. Uh-oh. You know what? I... Yeah. S- I said that Eric should hire Christine Weston Chandler and put work Sonichu into the Ripperverse. I mean, Sonichu has a better storyline, is a better book, has more copies with such a less budget. Sonichu is a more successful literary achievement than ISOM is. That's just a fact. It's, it, there's books behind it. Financially, not the same. No. I don't know where this one starts, but... Are, Are you sure kidding? this isn't Dick in an Andy in an Andy Dick that. wig playing Andy <laughs> Masterson? Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Back and thanks for watching. This is uh, the latest in his mic is very tinny. YouTube content creator action I think it would figure be review. Nicer. It's a fun looking mic. This figure is uh, of Mr. Eric July, and when I found him on YouTube. Um, Scam lead. Actually, surprised that he didn't come up in my uh, in my feeds for um, entertainment. Uh, it was more along the lines of uh, political discourse. Yeah, because he's not entertaining. <laughs> 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 That's why. And uh, as I've watched him and gotten to know his content, uh, I was very happy to find uh, how many. Uh, facets we actually aligned with. So I've been a, a big comic book fan since I was eight years old, and uh, okay. it's always been very near and dear to my heart. And no so shit, I find toy man. Who shares that that <laughs> same kind of passion for it. It's very refreshing, as well as someone who also shares uh, a similar philosophy on the outlook of uh, life in general. And most importantly, the idea of personal creativity and making your own things. Instead of just waiting for someone else to make something that you want and let them offer it, you have the ability to uh, to create things on your own. By the way, the dialogue in Isom, every, almost everybody's dialogue is written almost like an Eric July tweet. Like Eric July talking to Eric July talking to Eric July. I don't know if he wrote it i like i honestly uh, at this point i'm convinced that he can't write I, I think he has a dummy writing it for him who also can't write hmm. but i definitely cannot imagine eric july writing an entire script just based on his tweets <laughs> i mean <laughs> well if, that's if, what they read like though you, and there's multiple pages with no text on them at all in isom one if, if you look at the way he runs his business like he doesn't know how to do that either, right? He thinks he can just throw money at something and and that's that's working. That's 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 doing something. It, it, he he probably thinks he can just throw words on a paper and it and it works. But it, it's not even all his fault though, right? I'm sure he didn't write have three or four rings interchange on this guy's hand. And uh, <laughs> like everybody there's a fucking idiot, right? I'll just say this, man. Like again, I'm writing a comic occasionally. Okay, so you write a script, right? Occasionally, I'll be like, oh, here's like a little snippet from the script. I've never seen Eric post anything from his supposed... Like, aren't you excited? You know, you ever see like a screenwriter who'll be like, oh, I just finished the first draft of this, and he'll post a picture of the script or like a little page or like a snippet of dialogue. He's never posted that because I don't think he's writing it. You think he's hired a stenographer? He just sits on the phone late at night. He's like, yeah, and then I have him come out of the building and... uh, uh, they'll throw them out, right? And then, and then this white woman will come down, and she'll just fly up in the air and then drop his ass on a car. Well, he's got this guy Marcos. Uh, 
You know what? I'll get into that in a second. You guys have to see the Eric July action figure. That's what that's what this is building towards. Oh that shit! Is, really? <laughs> try that. Uh, it's the whole purpose of this channel is so that people might pick up some some tips on how to do things, or maybe be inspired on how to uh, to create something. Does this guy himself. make the fucking dolls? Yes. You might not be able oh, to. Oh no, man! Draw, but who makes his something. own weird custom action figures? Oh, and made dude. an Eric July doll because oh, no. that's <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't make an Isom figure. That would have made sense. He made an Eric July figure. <laughs> wow. I don't know if that's better or worse. It's infinite. Like, I thought worse. it was it's worse. It was pretty... <laughs> yeah. It's worse. <laughs> oh, because my God. if he was a fan of Isom, he would have made an Isom action figure, but Isom is less interesting than Eric July directly. Yeah, he's Isom just, is just Eric July just with a fucking love skin suit. These guys sit alone in their house all day, and they go online and they listen to guys uh, telling them what to be mad about, and then they form these weird parasocial relationships where they go, "Yeah, that guy's basically like my best friend. I see him yep. every day." That's part of that's part of the reason why Eric July exists, though. Because these guys, they didn't have girlfriends, they didn't have shit to do, and they would just sit at home and read comic books, and then comic books like, we want to sell some to these girls now, we want to sell some to everybody, so they make comic books for girls, and they don't want to sit and read comic books about things they can't have. <laughs> also, these guys don't realize, the whole comic community where they're like, man, comics really suck now, and I'm like, now comics kind of always sucked. Like, there were a couple good ones here and there. Yes! Let's be clear, most of this shit Sorry. was for fucking children. We need to get Eric to have a con and have one large bitch boy slap fight. Bitch boy slap yes. con. By the way, uh, just really quick here, wanted to ask everyone watching if you would please like the stream and start a tip train. We really, I, I was hoping we could get to 30 or maybe even 40% before tonight's show. So if you have any questions or comments on anything we talk about, feel here free to send it in. Here is some money for the there sweet we go. boys. Love the yeah, show. Yeah, baby. Also, want 50%. One, one last thing. Check out the audio version of the show. I have it linked down in the description. We did a pre-show before this started for about 10 to 15 minutes. It's pretty great. It's pretty funny. We talked about stuff we're not going to talk about on the show. So go check that out, too. Sorry, Vito. What were you saying? Uh, I think I was saying that, again, these guys are obsessed with thinking comics used to be good, and the problem is that a bunch of liberals showed up and made them woke. I was like, G dude, go back and read. Like, for every good Spider-Man issue or whatever, you know, there's, like, a bunch of dumb ones or whatever. Or, like, some of the shit these guys talk about where they're like, can you believe they ruined Masters of the Universe? I'm like, have you ever actually tried to watch an episode of Masters of the Universe? It was not, like, a good show. It was made to sell it was, toys. It was a toy it was commercial. Made to sell toys. Yeah. It was a big, stupid toy commercial. Yeah. Well, you know it how didn't have any these... deep characterization or anything. You know it was how finicky from a these camp, old men uh, get over their toys? Yeah. These men love their toys. It's always so crazy to me when people go, like, I can't believe they ruined Transformers. I'm like, bro, even Transformers, like, if you go read, like, the original Transformers comics, they're fucking illegible. They're just all going, my name is whatever, and I turn into this fucking thing. It's like, we have to fight the Zamtrons from Galog 4. Yeah. And it's fun now from a camp perspective of, like, hey, yeah, look at how dumb and shitty this was. Like, we're kind of cool in a way. But these were not, like, deep fucking franchises to begin with. People were just dumb back then. Like, have you seen Cats? No, that I've shit never was, that that shit was the bad. longest running Broadway play People for the longest it. time, and it was miserable. The only thing that stopped that was that they just got YouTube and there was actual cat videos. I mean, and first, people were like, wait, we can watch actual cats? What the fuck? <laughs> go see cats. You have to be really into musical theater, though. Like, to them, to people who are into like musical theater, like Broadway musical theater, they liked that shit. You know, but even even Cats compared to other Broadway musicals is complete shit. It's so bad. Yeah, you know, I I'm not a fan of it, but obviously somebody was. I don't think I don't think they fought against the woke agenda, and that's why people said they liked it's, it. It's cat people. <laughs> we as dog people, we understand there are cat people, and they need shit like that to watch. Isn't there some kind of like cat con going on in Seattle right now? There's I like wouldn't know that maybe that's where the fire came from. Dog people right don't fuck around. And, um, 
take pictures, you can uh, just put on a microphone and, and put your ideas and your opinions out there. Wow, but how profound. You'll never know unless you try. And By the way, uh, nothing worse in the world. It is. It, it's called the Sea Meow Cat, the biggest cat <laughs> convention in the Pacific Northwest. It just happened to land on my birthday. Fucking assholes. Yeah. World and regret. So don't have any, and take those chances when you, when they arise. So with with Eric July. Uh, There's a lot of buildup for I made so an action figure. Of these similar opinions <laughs> myself. Um, as, a, as, a, very as a gray bearded man who makes action figures, he feel, needs that build up. Yeah. <laughs> he needs it. I like <laughs> he's he's comparing himself. He's saying me and Eric July are basically the same, and I'm like, eh, some differences. <laughs> me, an action figure that I thought was going to be um, something. Maybe in the fact they take pride in mediocrity. Something I thought would be. Uh, I would rather uh, have one of this guy's action figures than I saw. Him. Really? Some of yeah. My best work. The replay so, value of these toys is way better than an Isom book. You get through Isom, you're like, okay, maybe I can wipe my ass with it. At least you can make these things fuck or jam one <laughs> up your these, butt. These action figures almost resemble like older 1960s and 70s action figures with yeah, like the soft like body. I, yeah. I wonder why. I wonder why this old man does that. <laughs> why is this old man? Oh, God. <laughs> Hold on. This isn't a Kimbo Slice action figure? Dude, can no, we no. buy one? Can we buy? Is it for sale? Oh, God. If I could get a custom, if I could get this guy to make me a custom Eric July figure. Yes. Uh, I'd start uh, an OnlyFans okay. with it. <laughs> I'd put it in a jar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got to get an Eric July cum jar going. I wonder if he'd make a super killer I figure. I think we know what Sturgis would make two of I these action to. figures do. You know it. Sturgis and his uh, icky fantasy of toy humping. I did have a fan make this, which you see, this is badass because it's my character. It's not fucking me. <laughs> <That's dope. laughs> That's not it's 3D you? printed? No. He actually he made one that was supposed to be like a porn one to put in a jar, but it got lost in the mail, and we're all really disappointed <laughs> about it. Huh. Yes, this is horrendous. It It's, it's creepy. Look just like him. Look. He's going to sell you his stupid culture war artifact and make you I, feel like throwing money at him is a big win for your side. I bought the Eric July Fleshlight. It, it was a, such a ripoff. When I went to stick my dick in it, I realized the slot was his wallet. <laughs> it was a ripoff. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this guy. It, it, this guy almost... We'll play a, a couple more minutes of this guy. This guy almost talks like a televangelist preacher. This uh, is Eric uh, July. Yeah. Um, book resources. When with spinoff titles for the Ripperverse characters like Alpha Core or Yaria, one of which is going to be written by comic profession and actual comic icon Chuck Dixon, all of that coming on the way, well, there actual is no stopping Eric icon. July. There's no stopping <laughs> Eric July. The funny thing is that, like, Chuck Dixon has just been, like, a gun for hire for the past 20 years. Like, literally, we could have hired Chuck Dixon. Like, yeah. all you have to do is show up at his house and be like, I'll pay you $5,000 to write a comic. And he says, okay. Uh, but everybody's going, I can't believe you got Chuck Dixon. I'm like, that guy who hasn't worked in mainstream comics for 20 years? Yeah, what a big gift. <laughs> if, if, you're, if, you're a, if you're an indie filmmaker, you know? The guy who wrote the QAnon comic book, Alt Hero Q? Yeah, how'd you get yeah. that guy? If you're an indie filmmaker, though, this is the way you brag about getting, like, Jim Caviezel in your movie. Right. Like we we have Jim Caviezel, actual Jesus. He's in our film. <laughs> You're like, yeah, we, we get it, dude. We, get we got it. You Kurt couldn't Cameron. hire anybody else. I don't know if you've yeah. heard of him, but he's kind yeah. of a big okay. deal. Well, <laughs> not really. In like 1988, he was yeah. a big deal. <laughs> That's like the Daily Wire bragging about, we've got Rob Schneider to voice uh, our cartoon Chinchilla uh, for our new kids network. I don't know if you guys saw that big announcement. <laughs> no. Really? It's like, wow, you guys got Rob Schneider to do the voice of Chip Chilla on Daily oh. Wire's new kid-friendly Chinchilla animated programming. I feel bad for game. Rob Schneider. I don't. When you when you peak <laughs> when you peak at Deuce Bigelow, like <laughs> at yeah. least at least he's part of the the Sandler clique. You know, he's a like you can't be that bad when you're Adam Sandler's friend. 
money oh, yeah. just falls in your lap. But it's it's man, that's that's rough. it's weird. It's Sandler. Yeah, it's weird because like nine years ago, I saw Rob Schneider do stand up and he 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 fit a bunch of like left wing talking points into his routine back then. So it's weird yeah. to see this kind of about face that he's done. Was that about the same time Trump was left wing? Uh, no, because uh, around that time, Trump was pushing the whole birther thing. Um, oh, OK. Yeah, it was like nine years ago. Um. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I everybody is at one point, but now it's clear that he's just a fucking, <laughs> he's fucking lost it. Yeah, yeah. Here... Everybody's left wing until they see the next generation of left wing. Yeah, cringe. Oh, I wanted I wanted to show you uh, Sturges. We call this guy Sturges. Uh, that's not his actual name, but he gets triggered when we call him Sturges, so that's his new name, and now everybody <laughs> calls him it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're brutal. We're really mean to him. I think he's got some mental disabilities, and we really pick on him. So if if you have a problem with it, just tell us, and we'll we'll go. No, we'll, we'll stop. Fine. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here here he is. He's met. This is a video he made because he was mad that Dick Masterson said Eric July is not creative. Mm. Hello everyone, I am Renowned Zero, and we are back again talking about some Ripper vs. Tractors, but before we get started... By the way, this guy calls us fat all the time, and he is clearly fat also, <laughs> so I don't get it. I, uh, the, I think I've seen this guy's videos, yeah, he's always posting about you. He's, yeah. he's not as fat as he is short, we've learned that when we saw him in a picture next to Gina Carano. He sh yeah, he's like two to three inches shorter than Gina Carano. Jesus. Yep. We want to say thank you to everyone who have watched the videos and subscribed to the channel to see more content. We are now, as of 2 a.m. this morning, we have been fully monetized. You're I welcome, Sturges. YouTube partner. So thank you, everyone, for being here. I really do appreciate it. We've got everything going from memberships to super chats, super All right, thanks. We're going to skip to you talking sticker. about All that revenue. Month. Nothing too guys. Dig my Press Ron Paul, who well, hold yeah. on, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, which will never have ever happen. Uh, where's the Dick Masters? Oh, okay, here we go. Deserve, not deserve this, they, they so desperately want, excuse me. But of course, in the quote tweets, both Vicky Verse and Dick Masters, in, of course, had something to say. If someone claims to be creative while spending most of their energy and time flipping out over what other people say about them, which a lot of time is pure hate concern trolling or lying no 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 pure, it's fun man his this guy projects so much he is one of the most bitter hateful people i've ever encountered on the <laughs> internet yeah but but even if it was just bitter hate and concern trolling eric july should not be responding to it the way he responds to this shit it's no. that's that's the best thing about eric july is he's a fucking milkable lol cow he responds <laughs> in the dumbest ways to all this shit it's beautiful Dude, the way he's been calling Dick, like, a, he keeps calling him after an Arthur character. He keeps calling him Buster, Buster Baxter. Baxter. Yep. And we're like, that's a great fucking nickname. I don't I don't know why you think this is, like, going to hurt us at all. Like, that's that's helpful. Oh. Which one Which one of the Arthur characters was voiced by uh, the, the who's the alt-right guy that beat his wife Steven or whatever? Crowder. Hates his wife. Yeah, who, which one was voiced by Crowder? Wait, Arthur? One of the Arthur characters was voiced by Crowder? Yes. When he was a kid, yeah. Yes. It was nuts. Yes. Oh, that's so weird. I uh, have no idea. But Vito... The brain. The v brain. Okay. V Vito, we saw your rap. Billy, Billy critiqued oh, oh, your rap. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's I why I don't rap. It. Is because I, it, becomes a, it becomes a I, whole thing. I cringed. I cringed, but it was you great. Should. It was you great. You, you guys, you guys, uh, you guys pulled it off. It was the, the shaky start... Had me cringing. I was like, "Oh no, oh no, oh god!" See, this is why I, we, we. This is why we don't. Uh, this is why I've always avoided rapping. It's like in high school, it was like all about man. You got a freestyle. It was a big oh, freestyle. And, and, and I could tell because Dick was like slipping, and I, then you came in to pick it up. I was like, "Oh, oh god!" I, Dick's, I was, Dick's rap when he was dropping yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, "Oh Dick god!" Was like, this, this beat's all wrong, and I'm like, "No, dude, you just gotta find it like this." Yeah, that was a. Uh, Dick is not used to uh, the freestyle world, but it was just... but it was fun, and uh, we made a point to point out how uh, e e like e this is what makes you guys so much better than any of the Eric July people. 
You guys just have fucking fun with everything. Oh, dude, These they're guys all can't like have mad. fun. They're miserable. Yeah. They're all like, miserable. I, I I don't get it. Is they're like, oh, we're clowning you, and I'm like, I don't know, man. It seems like you guys are like genuinely upset about something. I don't get it. Yeah, they it's do not, that. And again, we're not going at you. I mean, we are because you're dumb a little bit, but mostly like you know, we're talking shit about Eric July and his little YouTuber buddies who you know suck his dick, and I guess his fans who are all dummies. You know what? Okay, sure. His uh, fans are dummies, and they're hilarious to to talk so about. And this guy was like, this guy was like, "You guys are punching down on me. You're punching down on me." So what does he do in response? He doesn't react to our video. He reacts to the comments that other people have left on our video. Wow! So like the yeah, comments of our you, viewers. The same video he started accusing us of punching down was the same video where he stopped responding to us and only our viewers' comments that weren't even towards him directly. They were in our chat. <laughs> okay, like, see, that's what was pissing me off about Eric July is that me and Dick would, you know, we talked a little bit of shit out of the comic. We gave a review of it. And then, like, some of our fans were on Twitter, and they're like, uh, yeah, you know, I tried reading it, too, and it kind of sucks. And rather than attacking me and Dick, who have, like, you know, lots of followers who can, like, back us up, Eric was going after guys who had, like, 20 followers and being like, yeah. this Listen, you crack smoker. You don't know anything about the comic industry. And I'm like, bro, leave our fucking fans out of it. We're not, like, picking out your little fans, you know, and, like, going after them, man. Uh, and, again, this is a guy who supposedly made, like, $4 million. Doesn't he have better things to do than fight with literal nobodies? Oh, he definitely Twitter? doesn't. He, no, he, he, does his, he does his detractor streams where he confronts detractors, but he only confronts people who have, like, a little bit of liberal mania. And right. are easy pins to knock over. Oh, dude, he's he like, like literal like idiots for that. Yeah, he's yeah. bowling with bumpers, and he yeah. makes, <laughs> makes him and his his idiot fans think he's like the kingpin. It's like, no, dude, you're bowling with bumpers. Yeah, it's if pathetic. you bring on rabid, I mean, like some of these guys are clearly like fucking autistic or you know weirdos. Yeah. You know, yeah, if you drag them on, that's the thing. He goes like, I'm gonna fight with my haters, but he only brings on guys who are like mentally ill. And he goes, see, anybody who doesn't like my comic is, is fucking nuts. And it's that's like, also know, the people I'm, buying the comic, too. Like, yeah, it's we, also case in point. It's classic controlled opposition. And an and, and action figure. He, he, will only, he will only go toe-to-toe -to -toe with people he knows can't make him look like a fool. He thought he, he, had a little, he had a little gas in the tank at the beginning with you guys, but immediately pulled out. Immediately pulled out. Oh yeah, dude. It's uh it's been fascinating to watch this uh captain of industry stumble over himself to fight with like, you know, Rabbit Boy 9000. He some made, random Twitter dude. Eric made a video recently where he's like, "Well, I don't even get upset about I'm so happy about the Ripaverse that I don't even get upset about the stuff that used to bother me in comics anymore. It's it's the cure for being mad about how they ruined comics." It's basically oh, <laughs> he had a tweet where somebody was like, what movies or comics or TV shows like do you consume? And he basically said, I haven't watched anything or read anything in the last 10 years from the from the modern era. And I'm like, so all this shit you're saying sucks. You haven't actually seen any of it or read any of it. You're just like, yeah, the comics suck because somebody showed me one panel from one comic. And that's enough to say the entire industry is broken. Like there's people right now who are saying. Yeah, like, DC and Marvel fucks up sometimes. Like, you know, actual comic fans, they're like, but the stuff they're doing is not, like, the end of the fucking world. Like, yeah, occasionally there'll be, like, some comic that they give to, like, some rando and they start putting pronouns in for some X-Men character or whatever. But they're like, that's not the majority of it. It's like, they're like, if anything, they're actually doing pretty good these days. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've heard like, I've heard some of his fans say they hate it when, when uh, someone's sexuality is uh, like one of the main aspects of their character but we've seen that with heterosexuality throughout comics forever dude like one of the biggest like you want to see fucking spider-man uh kiss and mary jane yeah. you want to see fantastic bang and his wife like yeah if there's a gay character you might have a boyfriend and uh i don't know man i don't think they're making you watch him you know, ride the leather pony. Yeah. Just kind of like, hey, here's my boyfriend. We're hanging out. Well, this guy on the screen here was like, but that's not normal. So I don't like that because it's not normal. 
Yeah, which, you know, most comic book characters are uh, famous for their normality. Which is funny, because <laughs> if you go back if you go back 15 years on this guy's channel, he he has a video where he's having his Naruto action figures buttfuck each other. <laughs> and we might have to go back on that other old man's figure channel. He might have some videos like that back oh, then, too. Maybe. I wonder if he's got like a cum doll in his collection. He just jizzes on. I always question doll collectors of all kinds, though. Not like even women or uh, de- develop not uh, not developmentally delayed, but like women who have dolls when they're like in their twenties. See they're how gotta be doing some weird dolls. shit. S- see how he pulls up the camp. He pulls up the campaign and he literally reads every number on the screen, and it, it almost talks about it like he was the one that accomplished this. It's a byproduct of the ismtism. He did accomplish it. His money's up there in the campaign number yeah. two. All these guys have money invested in this bullshit. How much money did you give to Eric? Oh, I gave Eric four hundred dollars. Wow, I only gave him two hundred fifty dollars. This guy claims <laughs> that we we didn't pay for it and we pirated it just because because we're so broke we can't actually afford it. He's like, you're a brokey. That's why you didn't buy it. It's like what? It's like yeah, I kind of just don't want to give Eric July money, <laughs> right? <laughs> Like that's that's really it. Yeah. I don't think he deserves it. If he put out let's put it this way, I don't you know, he doesn't want to put out a digital version. Okay, well that's his fault. If he had a digital version, even if it was like ten bucks, I'd be like, All right, yeah, here's ten bucks, I'll read it. But uh he doesn't want to do that. So yeah, you know, I had to have somebody loan me their copy. What are you gonna do? That's fine, I borrowed it at, like the library. Nothing unethical about he that. He probably he probably doesn't want to make it easier for people to get a hold of the book. Well, no, that's the thing. That's the other thing. Okay, here's something he does that drives me absolutely nuts. Is like if you have a good product, what is something you try to do? You try to go to like people who review stuff professionally, like websites, and you go, "Hey, I got a great product. I think your I think your readers are gonna love it. I want you to check it out and uh, you know you do a review, right?" Eric July, somebody's like, would you ever give a, a copy or a comic to a reviewer? And he goes, no, those broke-ass monkeys got to pay. Like, no more access media or whatever. And I'm like, okay, so, and then all his fans go, yeah, that's right. Fuck the critics. Like, that's what they deserve. And I'm like, no, see, that's what Hollywood does. Like, when Hollywood has a bad movie, you go, hey, can I review the movie, like, ahead of time? They go, uh, you can review it the night before. And that's when you know, oh, that's a bad movie because they don't want any critics to see it. It's the same shit with comic books. If you're afraid, if you're not giving your comic book to critics, it's because you know it sucks. He's giving it to sick kids, Vito. Oh yeah, he's giving it. If you give him seventeen bucks, he'll give it to sick kids. (laughs) And you kind of know you're in a. You kind of know you're in a cult when you're not supposed to expose the cult to the outside world. Yes. Like that's that's part. That's one of the the key indicators you're in a cult. If you look on the FBI cult website, it'll be up there. A big part of the cults is having a secret book that you can only get access to if you give a bunch of money <laughs> right? to the cult. <laughs> Compare, uh, learn all about Zenu and his, his followings. If right? You, uh, is is Zenu about to be Isom? Is is he the the person who gave Isom the powers? I, I I hope we get some Zenu action. I don't know why we never got the great Scientology epic. I guess Battlefield Earth kind of screwed they us. They tried. Up. They <laughs> tried. It's it's uh, also the the the, the, the whole creation of Scientology came from, you know, all the other epics that the, the fucking, I can't remember the damn arth, uh, author's name right now. What, oh, uh, yeah. Shit. The Scientology boy, uh, not Gene Roddenberry, whatever the dickhead's name was. He was in an RR. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. George hard R Martin, whatever, the, whatever the, the, the Scientology L Ron Hubbard. Yeah. And bomb Hubbard. Ron L Ron. And I, I get I get N bomb Hubbard and uh, George Hard R Martin confused. <laughs> George but, Hard R uh, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Ever see the movie The Master? No, no, I love it. It's such a great movie. It's basically about Scientology, uh, okay. starring what's his name, Joaquin Phoenix. Okay. Basically, gets out of World War II and he's a big weirdo who just wants to fuck women and get drunk and is probably mentally retarded. <laughs> and he meets who is basically L. Ron Hubbard. And uh, yeah, L. Ron Hubbard takes him in. That sounds pretty good. I gotta watch. Oh man, it. it's so fucking. It's a great movie. <laughs> I love. I love that movie. Nice. Now, um, 
I, I want to, at some point tonight, Vito, we got to get down and dirty and talk about this, uh, this other movie that came out recently. Um, Barbie? Barbie. We got to have the Barbie conversation. I love Barbie. It's, it's, it's very good. I saw you talking about it with uh, Destiny the other night. And, yeah, uh, I forget. Destiny hadn't seen it. And I think he was like, of course. Dis- he was like he dismissive. Did. He was a little dismissive was, of that whole. He screen. was dismissive of the whole the whole conversation. Yeah, I was like, I know. I think. Well, I think part of the problem is that. Uh, that Why don't you just say you're against free speech? Why don't you just say it? <laughs> I'm Shut not the fuck speech. up. Uh, Steven, well, he, Steven, put the video game down for a second and listen. You fucking <laughs> ass. I think part of the problem was that Sherry like set it up, and she's like, "Oh, you and." You and him are going to have so much fun talking about Nick Fuentes. And they got on. He's like, I don't want to talk about fucking Nick Fuentes. I'm like, well, I didn't set this shit up. That ain't my yeah. fault. Uh, Destiny will be on Biggest Problem in the Universe this Friday at 10.30 night, nice. 1.30 a.m. if you're on the uh, East Coast. He's getting nice. off the plane and coming right over to us. I don't know why he's a psychopath, but uh, we'll be happy to have him. Sounds fun. I, we know why. I watch Destiny. <laughs> Um, he must, I, I can't imagine. Yeah, I'm just surprised he's uh, he's got the stamina, but I guess he's still a young buck. Um, There's a lot of things to do in California. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> are you familiar with the Cool Cat movies, Vito? Vaguely. Were those the ones by, like, not Plimpton? Was it Plimpton? No, it's a guy no, named that, Derek that's, Savage. That's, you're thinking Fritz the Cat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, these are some really bad movies that were like they they were like a vanity project by this kind of scammy guy and he he tricked a few celebrities into being in the movie he got uh vivica a fox and eric estrada to be in this really bad movie they they even filmed it in a neighborhood i did hear about this yeah they filmed it in a neighborhood and in the background you can see people like opening the front door and seeing them filming and like going back inside it's (laughs) so his Another thing he does, he skipped it last year, but he does this award show, the 420 Awards, and he's finally... It might just be me, Whoa. but every time I hear Sturgis talk, he sounds like the young low wrestler guy you played on DP long ago, who would dive into tables full of painful oh, items. The jug- Keep up yeah. the good work and don't let Super the get you down. Yeah, instead of diving into tables full of painful items, he dives into conversations he can't mentally grasp. <laughs> yeah, so here's... Uh, Derek Savage's uh, ad, he put out an ad for the 420 Awards. Hey, guys, it's Derek here, and are you ready to have some fun? Yes, sir You know what that means. It means the 420 yes, Awards are ready to post and, and to show you. Hey, I'll tell you what, guys. Here's a scene from it. Dirty Dog was nominated. His song was nominated. In this <laughs> yeah, the, the protagonist is Cool Cat, and the antagonist is Dirty Dog. To your show and he and tried to jump on the coronavirus thing early on, and then and I before think he that became it was like bullying. an antivirus. I think he became an antivirus person in between because by the time the video started to get released, he, he was like making like tongue and cheek jokes about it. It was very <laughs> cute, but he was taking it very seriously when he thought he could make a dollar off of it. And then he was like, "Well, you know this virus." And it's like, oh. he also did a gun <laughs> a gun safety one. He's done all sorts yeah. of weird shit, and he positions it as like educational. He'll try to get people to buy his books. I'm uh, sure like, he gets like grants schools. for a lot of this shit. Oh my god, what a waste. He got a little mad. Here's part of the scene. Okay, um, I'm going to release it. Hey, what days you got? Like next Friday or next Saturday? You let me know. Put put a comment down below when you would like to, to see the fifth annual 420 Awards. Get ready to have fun. Guys, take it easy. And next Friday or next Saturday, put it down below. Hey, and if you're not subscribed... So he's asking his fans when he should do the the award show if they want it friday or saturday huh okay you know channel. what you know what? i was gonna say friday because i can't wait but i actually have something going on friday so i'm gonna say saturday okay because I, <laughs> I, I i i need to have to wait because otherwise i'll cancel my friday plans to watch it good choice it's gonna be it's gonna be a big uh, event yeah it's the 420 yeah, awards okay. i wonder See i wonder who's gonna win movie of the year again he had a ventriloquist on and he called it he called them his ventrilo twist 
there's there's <laughs> so much <laughs> unintentional comedy at this thing. It's unbelievable. And you know what he'll do? He'll create awards to give them to himself. He'll nominate himself as like best director or like cool cat <laughs> as best character or whatever and give himself his own award. And there's like 10 people in the audience for it. <laughs> it's it's right. next and level. All the other awards that go to major motion pictures. And when, when he's when he's introducing the award, he'll be like, oh, and uh, Brad Pitt couldn't make it tonight. So accepting for Brad Pitt will be the janitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at what it yeah. says at the bottom. The non woke award show. So he's riding that wave. Finally. now. Too. Or 20 Finally. awards, baby. Finally. I got to watch I... this cool cat. So there's Seriously. only one Cool Cat movie, though? No, no, oh. but there might as well be because the other Cool Cat movies were just, like, re-edited footage from the old ones made to make a new movie. And the guy who originally played Cool Cat, uh, like, quit. So now Derek here does voiceovers with the old footage because uh, it's like a guy in a fursuit, basically, almost. It's the the cool cat movies are kind of made like sourdough bread is you use a little bit <laughs> the of the batch piece. from before to make the next yeah. movie. Did Eric just... Estrada like invest in this? No, I think he I thought think it was so. a, like a, I think he thought he was going to get um some. Cause it was uh, anti-bullying. The first movie's theme is anti-bullying. Basically. I think him well, and Vivica both did it because they thought they'd get some uh, re- award points written off of their court cases or something. Like, I think I'm they looking, thought it was a public yeah. service. I'm looking at a video of him on the Hollywood Christmas parade. Have you seen that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, but it's in, it's introduced by Eric Estrada, who's like hosting the parade. Yeah, and I he, don't know. So I want to know what's going on there. If he's like, <laughs> hey, can we get Cool Cat in here? He might, <laughs> that might have been what he did. He like uh, he probably got Eric Estrada to come into the movie because he met him there. And Eric Estrada thought he was going to do a big film. By the time he got there, he realized it was some old weird chump. Wait, we got to go back. What the fuck is this? This is the best song. Gomez and Sunshine. Oh, yeah. He gets the names of the nominees wrong all the time, too. He'll, like, say the names Lizzie wrong. Lizzie McAlpine. Coronavirus is a scam by Dirty Dog. I drink wine by Adele. <laughs> Calm down by Rima and Selena Gomez. And Sunshine by Steve Lacey. Oh my God. So this this film, he couldn't get the rights to the music, so Oh Yeah. It's probably better he didn't use the scam music for by this. Dirty Dog. By Dirty, by Dirty Dog. Dog. <laughs> That's a good song. <laughs> I drink wine by Adele. I think he's learned oh. though that people are expecting him to give himself the awards, so he, he'll switch it up every now and then. See, like, this, is like, this is like a pretty good marketing campaign because somebody who doesn't know what's up is they're like, wait, I haven't heard about this Dirty Dog song. <laughs> nominated alongside all these, all these other songs. How does he not have any, does he not have any music during this segment? Could he have like a little for a thing? 20 award trophy is the best looking trophy out there. It makes that Oscar award and go to- Is Derek doing Dirty Dog's voice? Globe look like a it's little bitch. It's not a good Mitchell. voice. <laughs> it's just his it's voice. Terrible. It's terrible. Oh, it's I'm terrible. Great. Get on that, man. Yeah. I'm nominated for best song and I better win. I want that 420 award. <laughs> it's not even a voice. It's just him, like, straining. I want that 420 award. Oh He's not a voice guy. He, he, made, had a, no. he had a guy to do the voices before, but they didn't get along well business-wise. Yeah. So he had to take over the voice. It was the guy that wore the cool cat suit. Um he made a music video just to show off his autographed Eddie Van Halen guitar right here. Oh, I, yeah, I was looking at that. It is a nice looking guitar. <laughs> it's the song is so bad. Huh. That's back when the cool cat. And roll. Guitar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think oh. you're supposed to play a signed guitar. Aren't you supposed to? You probably should. I, 
I'm not sure he's actually playing it. You're going to get your sweaty hands all over. Yeah, he's holding it. He shouldn't. And, and plus, Eddie's no longer with us, so that's like a commodity at this point. So yeah. he probably shouldn't mess with it. Oh, that buddy, was signed by... The, I guess when it's the Cool Cat music video, you know, you got to do it. <laughs> you gotta that was, that was Van Hagar. No, cool no, cat, no. That was... Cat. That, that was uh, that that was David Lee Roth era Van Halen that that guitar for. He had a matching outfit that matched the guitar that he would wear back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! For the 420 Awards, favorite song winner is "Calm Down" by Rima and Selena Gomez. No, Dirty Dog's gonna be pissed. Wow. What? This is a scam. And Derek better <laughs> keep my song out of his mouth. I'm going to get him. Yeah. That's oh, no. Award. Give it to me. Oh, no. Yeah. So, so Dirty wow. Dog, Dirty Dog's the bad guy. So him winning the award would have been horrible. Yeah. And him stealing the award, dog. him stealing the award is actually brilliant. Here he is on the local news in Las Vegas trying to sell his what stuff as like... Uh, education. Whoa, about whoa, with Derek whoa, Savage. Whoa. He is the author of a brand new series of books called Cool Cat. Derek, thank you so much for joining us. This is Jesus. perfect timing. The kids are back to school. So, of course, parents are encouraging the kids to read. Teachers are as well. Maybe they should put Cool Cat in the Ripperverse. <laughs> This is so books, embarrassing. That it wasn't really anything well, like you know, Jeannie, you going. know, Jeannie, I was kicked out of, of being around the schools. I wasn't allowed to go around the, the elementary schools anymore, Jeannie. So what I had to do was I had to create a kid's book to give the children a reason to come to me. I'm, he's hiring. He's, it's from two months ago. He's hiring for the, the Cool Cat movie. <laughs> I'm pretty <laughs> sure is, he was in have you seen the next movie, what the title of it is. What, no, I'm not sure what the current working title is. Cool Cat vs. Dirty Dog, The Virus Wars. Whoa. Oh, God. That sounds epic. The, yeah, Cool Cat's going to be like, I'm going to infect you with HPV. And then Dirty Dog's like, I'm going to infect you with herpes. And Cool Cat's like, all right, well, I'm going to infect you with uh, herpes simplex too. And and then it goes, it just goes back and forth. The, the poster says, featuring the world's only civilian-owned Harrier jet. And then yes. it says, starring Cool Cat, Dirty Dog, and the Harrier Jet. And <laughs> yep. there's like three yeah. pictures of jets on the poster. He's really excited about this jet. This is great. Yeah, he's buddies with that guy who's, he's like, he was like a Air Force, like a high-ranking Air Force guy. And oh, he's the only, has a jet. yeah, yeah, he's like the only, the only civilian that owns a Harrier Jet. And Derek Savage is buddies with him for some reason. Dude, I can't wait for the virus wars. Yeah. Yeah, he, I I think he uh, I think he's scrapped a lot of movie ideas he's had in the past where he says he's gonna make it and then he doesn't and he moves. They said on it was originally gonna be a direct sequel to Cool Cat Fights Coronavirus, but uh, apparently he's spinning it off to do its own thing. Interesting. He's so creative. <laughs> he uses the same picture of him and Cool Cat for every poster. <laughs> Funny how that works. It's probably the only professional photo they have. I love this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The first Cool Cat movie is is pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is this, I'm just tickled by this. I yeah. could look at this forever. <laughs> and I love that. I love that like local news stations will just fall for this stupid shit. Do you remember when that guy, what's his name? I forget the name of the actor, but he was going around pretending to be a yo-yo champion and getting on all these small town uh, cable access shows, but then he like clearly didn't know how to yo-yo at all, or he'd like show up in a cast. And he's like, "Oh, I broke my arm, so I can't actually do any yo-yo tricks." <laughs> but do you want to like ask me about yo-yos? That's and hilarious. Like, I I guess. <laughs> Just, like, <laughs> terrible segments. Who was that? Who did that? Uh, you've seen it. He's he's like a big actor now. Uh, hmm. God, what? Uh. He, Yo yo local news. Yeah. Kenny K Strass, the yo yo guy. I forget who played him. Oh, uh Gret Mark Proach. Okay. Who was on he's been on like uh he's in that what they do in the shadow show. And okay. he was uh it's the one with the lawyer. Better call Saul. Hmm. 
Here, I'll send you a compilation hmm. real quick in the link. I saw Case this. Crossed. I saw this thing where Nick Fuentes was on this show recently, and they questioned whether or not he was gay. You What's see? evidence yeah. that you're straight? What's what the, you said I'm gay, child porn. What's the evidence? Let's how hear many, it. What's the I case? I think there's been at least two people in your group that have basically been caught around, you know, with pedophilia. Who? Ali was one. And what is my relationship with him? Tell me. I don't know. You got fired by Kanye's campaign, so, didn't you? you Just so like you don't you know. But you got fired by him, didn't you? Uh, no. But let's talk about Ali because but, we could talk about Kanye, but let's talk about Ali because you said... Ali's Ooh. in my group. Well, we what does that mean? Because you just said that. I mean, that's like your best friend forever, isn't he? He's it? my best friend forever. What's my relationship with him? You know what it is. Now you're downplaying. You it. don't even. You but like you don't to... even know because you're here to attack me personally because you have defensive. some beef with my political you're, you're views. Get, you're get, I like Trump. You're getting. Did they live again. together? Do we know what Ali's relationship was with him? He was like his they... like second in command yeah. for the fucking organization. <clears throat> I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, no. Why don't you tell me who he was to your organization? Uh, yeah, dude, he got because like, and people knew about it. That's the weird thing is like they knew that guy was like sniffing around after underage. Wasn't it Milo that outed it? I think so. Milo was like, "Well, I might be gay, but at least, <laughs> at least I'm not." Yeah, sniffing after kids. Uh, man, the whole the whole Nick Fuentes fall from. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that guy. I think he's on. I think he's on his last legs. I think yeah. the grift is, is wrapping up. Possibly, I, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> I, I don't know. I, I feel like he's a valuable, like book. I think man. he's outlived his entertainment potential. There's nothing left. It's like, yeah, all right, he's like a little Nazi guy. But there's uh -huh. there's still like uh, liberals that are, are like that. That's that's the bad guy. That's our bad guy. And as long as he's like, eh. as long as he's a safe he's bad funny. guy, he's too he'll have to be a bad guy. He'd be a scary well, bad to guy. most to most people, like intelligent people, yeah. But to the latent, like yeah. everyday liberal, they're like, oh, that's that Nazi guy. That's that. They're, they're, well, as long as he has enough people calling him the bad guy, there will be some idiots watching him. I mean, he is a Nazi, though, right? <laughs> I mean. I mean, he's, like, not, he's not a Nazi like the ones our grandpas used no, to No, no, those don't really <laughs> exist anymore. It's one of those things where if a guy like keeps going like, hey, let's kill all the Jays, and you're like, okay, good joke, I get it. He's like, hey, let's open let's open a concentration camp. You're like, all right, I get it, you're, you're messing around. He's like, how about we you know, we'll lock them all in a cage and torture the shit? And you're like, why do you keep saying this stuff? Because now I think you actually believe it. Uh, and then he did like a big rally where he basically said, we're going to make all these people die in a holy war. Yes. And I'm like, okay, well, it's a really shitty thing to say. It's a stupid fucking thing to say. Who wants a holy war? Stop this. He does. Like, <laughs> yeah, he does. Genuinely. I mean, he's like a die. That's what I never understood is that these people are like, oh, he's so fucking based. I'm like, why? Because he wants to go back to like old school religious puritanism where you don't look at your fucking uh, wife, you know, you don't, you don't look at your girlfriend's vagina until the day you get married. I'm like, I don't want that. Why do you want that? Why do you he, think you want that? He doesn't even want a holy war. He wants the fan base of people who have been indoctrinated by ideologies and are and are so batshit into the fundamentalism and indoctrination that they'll listen to anybody willing to get on the fucking soapbox in their direction. That's all he really wants. If there was a holy war, he wouldn't fucking step foot near it. He wouldn't, he would, but he, he would, would encourage. I mean, that that's where he was on January 6th. He didn't go into the building, but a bunch of his followers did. He was outside yeah, of the building. He don't want that smoke. He's a rabble rouser. He's trying to benefit off of these fucking psycho people, and he's got nothing better to do. He's, Let, he's like, the, like there, there's, there's no better world for Nick Fuentes to be in than the one he's in right now, and his 15 minutes maybe are up. I think I think it's over from here. He, unless he like hard pivots and starts making rap music or something. But I mean, he almost <laughs> was. He, he was, almost was. He was dressing like Kanye. Kanye. Kanye gave him a new wardrobe. I never saw like I was aware of Nick Fuentes since like 2017, and he always just wore the suits all the time. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, if you're that close to Kanye, you got to get on a track. That's it. Because once you're on a track with Kanye, it's it's immortal forever. Kanye doesn't just put anybody on track, so Kanye is I know, actually but you gotta be good like, at listen, music. But Kanye was like at the height of his paranoia, and you got, had to be like, "Listen, man, we got to do it." You the worst put me person, on track Kanye, the only way for Jesus to come back. The worst person Kanye ever ever put on a song was Kanye. Mm. 
And Kanye is good. So that, that's, a, that's a pretty high bar. Yeah, that's true. At least get in the video. In an environmentally friendly All right. So this yo yo guy. Kids interested in this? Well, yo yo master Katie Strasser has an idea. <laughs> He's visiting medicine schools this week, teaching kids about being green. Now, how do you combine going green with the yo yo? <laughs> um, uh, well, <laughs> First thing, uh, one of the things that we do um, is teach the kids about how uh, recycling works. Mm -hmm. They'll do anything to fill air time. It's great. <laughs> yeah, dude. And uh, how so uh, uh, um, to recycle batteries, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, honestly, it's it's been kind of a struggle to get into some of the schools. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it's a shame because um, they do, they pay really well. But then when you get in, you need to, first thing you need to do is stop at the office, sign in, uh, get a badge. Mm -hmm. Not like gun smoke <laughs> badge. Right, just your name. Your process. name, and then the yeah. security guard will take you down to the... Uh, Auditorium, He's gymnasium, basically a room. How did how did you get started to do something like this? Uh, well, that, you want to hear a scary story? A, a brief <laughs> scary, scary mm -hmm. brain fart. Uh, <laughs> scary story is basically at one time this saved my life. I was literally in the gutter, <laughs> and it was gambling, drugs, uh, women, lotto. Well. That's basically gambling. But uh, <laughs> I was looking the Grim Reaper in his eyes, and I was at a door, and there was it was locked, and I needed a key, and this was the doorknob, okay. literally. And you know how when a drug, drug addict gives it their all? That's what I did with this. Can you show us some <laughs> of those cool tricks you can do with it? How about, yeah. How about we uh, uh, show each other some tricks? Oh, so gosh. I'll go first. You, I was gonna say you first. Okay, uh, this is the simple up and down. And when I when I'm with students, mm. what I say is, you know, life has a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and it, it's great because the looks on their faces are like, okay, dude, when he's just like going down the. Well, I was in a hole. And you want to hear a scary story? It's like, no, dude, this is a lighthearted fucking morning show bit. No one wants to hear about your drug addiction. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the worst thing because, you know, you don't know if this guy's for real or not. And you're not, you're not, you're trying not to lose your job by picking on the Tism guy. Right. That's the only thing that keeps Ben and I employed. But it's like these guys, they, they get, they get money from, uh, the, the, I don't know, the Fisher Price brothers or whoever runs the media. I'm, they gotta go along for the ride. Yeah. And this, uh, is, this, is, this is actually very close to like date does. rates. <laughs> e. See, these are these yo-yos are great for the environment. Not so great for yo-yos. This keeps happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how many schools will you be visiting this week? Uh, this week I am at Stoughton, mm -hmm. and I'm going up to Milton also. Okay. Sounds good. They're like, let's right, end once it. Once again, he is visiting Madison schools this week. If you like more information on Kenny and being green. Oh, this is a compilation of a bunch of his news appearances. Oh, yeah. There's like there's like a bunch of like some of the tricks he pulls off. He's just literally whipping it around his head. It's like not a <laughs> yo-yo trick at all. Uh, oh, hold on. Go back to that same clip real quick. Oh, OK. Go to like go to like 18 minutes in. All right. So great for yo-yo. 18. Keeping it green. Vito, I've heard you recently talk about having kids. Ah, we'll see. I've, I've, I've got a, I've, I've got a, I think I figured it out. I was thinking yesterday, I turned 40 yesterday and I was thinking when I get married, I'm going to get married to somebody who has the same birthday as me, except the day after. Mm. So I can never forget my wife's birthday. I feel like that's a big deal, right? Like when you forget, when you forget your wife's yeah. birthday. Yeah, my so family, my, my family's terrible at birthdays and holidays, so I got to get better at that. So I just want to wish my future wife a happy birthday right now. So I'm I, obviously going to gonna, I'm gonna marry somebody the day after mine, so I never forget. I think it's off on their level and, and try to hook them with something like a wrap. Okay. So it's uh, and it's kind of clever because it includes me. Okay. 
Um, oh, is goes, this a rap? Hey, they're up in the sky. It's the uh, K Strauss, the yo yo guy. And then I do the. Boo do do ba 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 do 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 I was crazy once. They locked me in a yo-yo. A rubber yo-yo. I died there. The rats ate me. The people, rats. Rats, I hate rats. People, they drive me crazy. People in the chat are like, this guy has to be playing a character. Yes, we were discussing this earlier. This guy was, was <laughs> yeah. trolling the news people, saying he was good at yo-yos, and then this showed up. like an actual yeah. comedic actor now. He's like been on the One in the chat. One in the chat, if you were having a fap when we explained that part Going? five minutes ago. And I get them into it. Okay. And so when once I do that, they are ready to learn. Okay. So you're ready to do the trick? Then I'm, I'm, Absolutely. I tell you what, I'm going to get out of the way here, and All I'm going right. to get Case Ross go ahead and take it away. And uh, I usually have like a headpiece for right. this. No, no, uh, for effect. Okay. Because I act like I'm in a uh, bl Blue Angel. Okay. So I say uh, air traffic uh, control. We are ready for takeoff. All right, 10-4 guys, let's roll. So you get that one going. <laughs> Lost one. And then uh, we're going and we get worrying and we're like, all right, everybody, let's take it down to the ground and we'll get into a Huey. And we get going. Oh, he's going. in a Huey. He's in a <laughs> Huey, dude. What I do? He got into a Huey. Look at that. He went no, all right, Huey. everyone. Yeah, we're going to switch it off here. And great let's if he bring it back the home TV behind for him. a clean landing. 10-4. Uh. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I, I got... Was that a clear landing? I'm very dizzy. Okay. <laughs> you want to continue where you're at, or can you do that? Okay, because you've got all eight yo-yos in there, but... Uh, actually, we've got seven now, so... Uh, but uh, Honestly, <laughs> I, I think I'm going to give up... Some of the yo-yo stuff because <laughs> I don't have the mus muscle memory. Okay. Well, anyway, but uh, you do uh, go on. <laughs> I don't it's getting depressing. The muscle memory. <laughs> on out to schools, and uh, again, let's talk a little bit more about the uh, Zips app and what they do. Like you said, uh, no, this is actually end the for. segment, obviously. <laughs> like, why is this guy still going? Or, He's got time to uh, it's, 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 it's a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. They're based it's, in Minneapolis. It's definitely a show. Uh, uh, the shows ran with a certain amount of allotted time. Yeah. And I, I, they they, they got to try and fill that time. Break. Throws off everything else. Somebody was asking who he is on Better Call Saul. He's the guy in the first season who like, <clears throat> don't they like the the, don't they steal his baseball cards or something or he barters oh, with okay. his baseball cards? I forget. He was like the nerdy homeowner. Who's uh, fucking around with actual gangsters? The homeowner? Yeah, the homeowner. 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 He hires them to uh, rob his house for the insurance money or something? I think that might have been it. Yeah. I, I think like that. that was it. Yeah. Oh. Now, we're going to have to have this conversation at some point about Barbie. I'm, I, I'm always ready. I've been waiting to have this conversation I'll with somebody. You. Ben, Ben hasn't watched it. Yeah, so I, I don't watch movies. So Barbie Vito, see, man, I, I saw you talking about Barbie. Uh, you were you were trying to have this conversation with Destiny. He didn't watch it either. Uh, you really enjoyed Barbie. I think you said it was one of these movies is going to be classic, a classic. Did you I compare it to Willy classic. Wonka? I said I compared it to like, yeah, it's going to be like one of those ones that's like, oh, you've never seen Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? What are you, nuts? You know, it's going to be like one of those. It's going to be in that breath. You've never seen Elf? You've never seen, uh, I don't know, Blazing Saddles? No. It's just one of these classic movies. Is it, it's just Pink Matrix, right? It is Pink. It's Pink. Uh, I think it's the movie reminds me most of is Steven Spielberg's A.I., Hey, I see this. This is where I think uh, that's a little off. I saw you tell Destiny that this is one of those movies where, like, the doll becomes uh, or wants to be a human, like Pinocchio style. Yeah. AI was Pinocchio. Yeah, I don't think that's what this is. I think this it's... is this is this is th this movie uh, is Barbie is an avatar for an ideology. 
And this is this is the the this is more like the the Jesus arc where somebody dies. Barbie has to die for the ideology so that we can go on and exist in 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 peace. You yeah. know, Pandora's box was opened when when this the villain of the movie, the mom, decides right. that, that her life sucks, so she has to make that Barbie's problem. And and then and then now Barbie. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, I didn't. Mean Barbie not that. only has to fix Barbie Land. She has, but she has to become, she has to die. She has to leave this utopia that is Barbie land and go to the real world. I disagree. So that this, 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 this stereotypical idea of women can die as well. I, I, I mean, is that your actual take on the movie? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I watched it three times, so I'm pretty sure think, that's, I don't pretty think sure that's Barbie, what's going on here. I don't think Barbie land is a utopia, though. It's clearly a false utopia. If anything, it's like is hell. It, is it, though? It's a world completely controlled by six-year-old girls and where no rational human being should want to live. Yeah, and then the villain of the movie, the mom, introduces adult ideas into this utopia. This is this is no, but this it is wasn't a, a utopia before. It was it was a fucked. It was a six-year-old utopia. Children, any any society controlled by the minds of children, is inherently uh, full of uh, what do you call it? Strife. And discontent and uh, inequality, as we see the Kens live in an uh, unequal society, because uh, what six-year-old girl cares about the plight of a, of a Ken doll? They don't care. It's all about but, Bart. But they're they're the gods in this universe. Yes, yes. The, the, and then and then you look at the real world in this movie, and you get the the Ben Shapiro types that think it's like an anti-masculine movie, when really it's about like male autonomy. The whole movie is is like a a pro male film. Like I mean, it, the it, movie has the ultimate manosphere message, which is it? not allow yourself to be be defined by the pussy you chase. Ken, who has spent his entire life as a simp, pining for the affection of Barbie, learns to uh, be his own man. That he is Kenuff, and does not need to uh, engage in this endless pursuit of a uh, meaningless uh, female companionship but that's not what will complete him well co he needs to complete himself first but in a, in a world run by six-year-old girls that he was complete like the, a six-year-old girl should never ever go further than what Ken was in her world well the problem, the problem with Ken is that he wanted Barbie but this Barbie was broken and, and and that was all goes on America Ferrera too. She ruined the entire world. They, they they literally opened up Pandora's box for Barbie, and there's a scene in the movie where she could have gone back in the box. You know how rare it is that you can go back into Pandora's box. But Barbie knew there was higher elevation. She had to meet the the uh, the Oracle. The I don't know is, is that the 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 architect whoever whoever the uh, the Rhea Perlman was, and yeah. she had to ascend through Pink Matrix to become the one. Rhea Perlman. So every was God. Let's this be movie. This movie was pretty much just the passion of the Christ, but Barbie was the Christ. There was some passion stuff there, but I think I think where we differ uh, is that Barbie Land is not the real world. It's a bad place. But the real world in this Barbie movie is not even the real world. We see like in in the scene where uh, the they go up the elevator. One of the buttons on the elevator is is not a, a button you would ever see in the real world. This is these are the I think levels Mattel, of the matrix to show Mattel this is another level. Is a, is a middle ground. Mattel is like purgatory. Mattel is the halfway point in your Dante's Inferno journey to the bottom layer of hell, which is Barbie Land. And, uh, and, and like you said, it's a classic, but it's a classic for all the wrong reasons. We watch Willy Wonka, and we like we like the kids and the candy and the fat kid going in the the Augustus Gloop and the Chocolate River. But really, yeah. really, what that movie was about was about the the corporate greed and freeing yourself, like this movie also was about, freeing yourself from the constraints of what society expects from you and learning to be honest and true with oneself, so you can then rise above and create the real free world that we should enjoy and live in. I think Barbie's just the Pinocchio story. <laughs> I'm sorry. Really I think you're off on that. I think you're off on that. A doll discovers what it is to be human and desires it for themselves. And yes, no, America Ferrer's uh, character did introduce 
complications into the Barbie universe, but the Barbie universe is a, it's a toy universe, so it doesn't matter. You could kill everyone in the Barbie universe and it would have zero moral repercussions because they aren't real. And you could say that about our own world. Well, I guess you could say that. <laughs> you, could say, you, could say, you could say that about and the grand if, 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 the there, if there is, they, they were all creations, they were all ideals, and if you can kill creations and ideals because you feel so and it's not immoral, then we have to look and see at what I mean, point are we a creation or an they're ideal? They're toys, you know. Like if you cut the head off a doll, you haven't really, you know, hurt anybody. Have you seen the way they play toy soldiers with a human race? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, There's some parallels there. If you look at the underlining of Barbie, it's really spelling it out for the the like the Bar Barbie and Oppenheimer came out, and people say these two movies had no real connection to each other, but they're both about a bombshell that changed the course of the world through the idea around it. <laughs> That's the literally literally Barbie and Oppenheimer are the same thing. Yeah. No, I, one I mean, once one's tailored I, for people Bar that pee Barbie standing is, up and one's yeah. tailored for people be standing down. That's all. I think Barbie poses deeper philosophical questions than Oppenheimer. If anything, Oppenheimer, it's kind of just hitch on the head, like, well, nuclear war, huh? What about that? Like, yeah, I get it. It's bad. You know, it's bad to kill people with nukes unless, I don't know, you have to. Yeah. Uh, but the, there's a lot. There's the, a the, lot. The Barbie, Barbie is about the, uh, the fear of death uh, for, in a selfish way, and Oppenheimer is about the fear of death in a, uh, in, a, in a more globalized, altruistic way. Yeah. Uh, I liked the singing in Barbie, I think, was better than the songs in Oppenheimer. So but, gotta... but the fucking in Oppenheimer was better than the fucking, the fucking in Barbie. fucking Oppenheimer was good. <laughs> did have that one decent show tune. Well, going when... to bomb him. We're going to put him in the ground. You, you, All you, the you... Japanese <laughs> don't know what's coming to town. <laughs> Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Hokkaido, Japan. Kill them all and clean up the hand. All right, I don't remember. Did you that. write this, Vito? No. <laughs> you know that that song sounds a lot like uh, a song from South Park. The it's uh, easy, Yunkai. When it's easy, it's easy okay. Yeah, the uh, the Oppenheimer. It's like you. How often do you see a Christopher Nolan sex scene? You knew you were getting the Christopher Nolan sex scene in Oppenheimer only so he could make it real fucking weird later on. And when they're in the fucking uh, office and the wife is there getting interviewed and she just starts watching uh, the, uh, who, I don't know, Florence Pugh, Flo, mm. Florence Pugh, when she just shows up in the middle of the conversation. That's that's classic Christopher Nolan sex <laughs> scene right there. He doesn't do them. That's, that's, that's like, oh, this son of a bitch is doing it just to make it weird. Too long. It's too long. Just to make it weird. Barbie Look, had good I, dancing. Barbie was great. I have not actually seen Oppenheimer yet because I'm waiting for it to come to home video because uh, three three hours is too long. I've seen Oppenheimer twice and Barbie three times in theaters. How do you have any time to do anything? To see Meaning these I've movies? seen I've seen six hours of each. I think that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie was really good. Uh, I, th I I have to I have to decide if it's better or worse than a uh, Spider Man. Across the Spider Verse, which was my number one film so far this year, huh? I had a good time with that. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I, I think I enjoyed uh, Across the Spider Verse more, but I'm not convinced it's a better movie. Um, well, because it ends on a cliffhanger, and the cliffhanger. Yeah. Great. When, whenever I mean, there's a, a cliffhanger, cliffhanger, whenever there's a trilogy, I have to see all three before I can really judge. Hmm. As Barbie is a standalone, I can judge Barbie for what it is. I'm sure it'll probably get a sequel, right? I forgot to keep up with my wrestling facts or famous moments last week. Oh, so shit. here's another one. That moment when an aging Hulk Hogan started doing his famous I can't hear you gesture, but in earnest, and it bummed everyone out. No. Oh. <laughs> in earnest. <laughs> no, really, I cannot hear you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hulk Hogan yeah. had a birthday this week, too. 70. The yeah. great Leos. The great Leos of our world. Billy the Fridge, Hulk Hogan, my future wife. I don't know who else. Fidel Castro. <laughs> Good old Castro. The great Leos. Alfred Hitchcock. I only know those two because they share my birthday. Teddy Rubskin. The great Leos. Steve Martin. The great Leos. 
everyone who's watching right now who hasn't yet liked the stream, please like the stream. Also, quick reminder, check out the pre-shows that we do. We recorded one before this episode, so that'll be going up in the next 12 hours or so, give or take. Also, uh, there's a link in the chat. If you want to check that out, you can bookmark the page so you can make sure to check out the pre-show every time we release one. Also, uh, help throw us a couple bucks. Help us uh, hit the tip train. We need the tip train right now. Thank you. Thank you. Get that train moving, folks. Yes. Let's do a a tip bombing spree. Uh, Each bomb will take out a different Japanese capital. Uh, 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 Are you trying to get us kicked off of Rumble? Hard put his sunglasses on an eight-year-old fan, and the child instantly aged into an old man. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy gimmick where Bret Hart's glasses just turned every child he put them onto it into a, a, a freeze frame snap switch to Freddie Blassie. It just <laughs> a hard camera cut into Freddie Blassie. Blassie. Yeah, it was a weird, weird gimmick. Yeah, pencil neck. Then, then, geek. then I think it was uh, who, who was it? Uh, the uh, the Red Rooster that came out and told Bret Hart, "You gotta stop turning these eight year old kids into eighty year olds, dude." Is that a gimmick? <laughs> Is that happening? No. <laughs> that would have been funny. That would have been a great wrestling gimmick. I'm just gonna take every Don Does Doodles wrestling fact and, and explain it, it like it's like it was real. Uh, yeah, yeah. What other movies are isn't some other movie? Oh, oh Blue Beetles coming out. Oh boy. Oh, they're mad oh. about that. The the Eric July fans are very mad about that. Why? I'll watch that because the because they race Blue swapped plays Magic the Gathering card. Because they race swapped the Blue Beetle. Even though there's been care. like three or four blue beetles, right? Well, he, th- that Hispanic blue Dibs beetle's been Nagasaki in the Nagasaki three for the last twenty years. They love bombing so powerful it skips Nagasaki two. Uh? Well, uh? Look, I love Ted Cord Blue Beetle. I get it, but like this, the the Mexican one has been around since two thousand six, so that's seventeen years or whatever you you remember uh, the 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 original the dan garrett blue beetle for the night when harriet tubman was inducted into the wwe hall of fame uh-huh. no one really understood why but the gesture was nonetheless appreciated <laughs> um yeah the uh the original the original blue beetle he had like a, a magical scarab and he had yes. legit superpowers and then the second blue beetle Got the scare, but then lost it. The yeah, he just like I thought. He I don't know if he lost. Did he lose it? I, just I thought, thought he, he lost it. it. And then the Mexican kid showed up, and he can use the scarab and get powers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm mad because they killed the second blue beetle. I don't know if he's back now, but he was great because him and Booster Gold were like the team. Ted Cord. And Booster Gold is the greatest DC superhero of all time. Uh, a man who came back from the future because he got caught sports betting on his own uh, college football games. <laughs> he just stole a bunch of shit from a superhero museum and went back in time and said, yeah, I'm a superhero from the future, and I'm going to be the next superstar of Earth. And uh, just committed to the bit. And I'd, it was great. I'd like to see... Uh... Martian Manhunter done right. Like they had him in wasn't he in the Zack Snyder cut? Yeah. Um I didn't like that, but I think they could have done it better. Maybe uh maybe they will eventually. Um Martian Manhunter could be cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you could get into him though. Why not? I don't know, because he's a fucking Martian man. He's afraid of was fire. Last time, was the last time we had an alien hero? That people love uh, Superman, but Superman's basically no. He is an alien, though. I'm, I I think and, Lobo and, uh, can be done right too, because they're gonna make Lobo, Lobo with Jason Momoa, right? I think all this DC shit sucks, and they're fucked. You don't think they could I ever do I it think better, James Gunn? I don't think they have a good universe. Did you man. watch? Uh, good... Did you watch uh, Peace uh, Peacemaker? Yeah. I think James Gunn is pretty good with so, characters. I don't think it matters how bad they are. Yeah, I think he's able. I think he is good at story. So like Vito, the Suicide Squad. Vito. So yeah, So was, you don't you don't fine. think DC has any good characters? I think they have good characters, but the problem is their shared superhero universe is like bad. It's like their characters don't work well together. 
like everybody loves Batman, right? And all the stuff that's because just of his Batman. Villains. Yeah, and his villains. And the whole Batman universe is great. And then when Superman shows up, it sucks. Because you're like, Hold what the on. Fuck's the point of Batman? I know what's going on here. Because I mentioned the Lobo movie and he started shitting on everything. Lobo is a superhero who kills uh, many times other superheroes. Does Lobo that sound is familiar? A super villain. Oh, he's oh. he's like an anti-hero. No, uh, he he kind of can fall into the hero category depending on who he's killing. Are you saying the Lobo comic book ripped off Super Killer Ben? <laughs> I, think so. I think Lobo came out in like the late '80s or something. Yeah, but the idea behind Super Killer is a lot different than just killing fucking. I don't killers. know. I don't know about that. He's Super Killer. <laughs> like if, if Super Killer was actually a ripoff of anything, it would be like. Um, uh, your your local garbage man. He's just out there emptying trash, basically. Yeah, man. He's just doing his job. He's just emptying these universal trash cans. He's got to. I can tell you what. Shut him down. Super rip off of. It's quantum leap. <laughs> well, kind of. Yeah, yeah. There's some of that. Yeah. <laughs> it's Gantz. You ever watch Gantz? No. You read Gantz. Bro, you gotta watch Gantz. I'm gonna tell you the story of Gantz real quick. Okay. In Japan, sometimes when you die. I understand Vito's issue here. Oh, why is there a rich guy in a bad suit when there are at least five Kryptonians and like ten The Flashes? Yeah, the universe sucks because like the characters don't fit together. It's like why is Batman hanging out with guys who are like can just you know lift mountains and shit? I don't know. I guess he's good. And then like I don't know. They don't. The the thing about Marvel is like most of the characters seem to have like roughly equal power levels. No way. No way. I, I mean, if you told me like Iron Man is gonna fight like any one of the X Men, I'd be like, yeah, that'd probably be like a fair fight. None of them are like. But then there's like infinitely these infinitely better than the other one. But then there's like these cosmic entities that are like gods essentially, and then there are like actual gods too, you know. Well, like Thor and the Hulk are like the standout tough guys, but even the Hulk is just like really strong. He can't like to fly anywhere and do anything. Barbie is a brilliant no deconstruction of feminism through the perspective I mean, of a child reared in our consumeristic society oh, wow. but needs more boobs, beer, guns, explosions and should have starred a computer animated Pamela Anderson. I thought it was kind of weird in the latest Guardians of the Galaxy movie they made Adam Warlock kind of like a buffoon and he was not like that. Uh, yeah, they, the, that pissed a lot of people off. Yeah, that was another person I would bring up, like a character that was like really powerful. What about like Gladiator? Remember Gladiator? That was a very powerful character too. Here's what I think about the DC universe and why it fails to the Marvel universe. Because is... one's owned by Disney and you're a Disney stan. Yeah, I'm a Disney stan. <laughs> uh, uh, I think with Marvel, you really understand the limitations of the characters and their weaknesses more. You know, like you understand, like, okay, the Hulk is like super strong, but he's like kind of out of control and, you know, can't plan ahead, you know? So that's an interesting character. Like, it's balanced out. Like, what is Wonder Woman's weakness? Uh, you yeah, know, I'm not even sure. What she's is, is, she's is, basically a god. Okay, like, like, they also have like essential character flaws, you know, like, uh, Iron Man, you know, he's too cocky, he's a drinker, whatever else. What is, you know, uh, Wonder Woman's essential character flaw? I don't know, she's a little, like, uh, too confident, maybe? What there, is the Flash's it, essential character flaw? It depends on which Flash you're talking about, right? Any of them. I think they I, don't have one. There are, there are other characters in DC that definitely have more apparent flaws, but I think Marvel works because like every character has like an, an obvious like psychological problem or like something that's their issue. You know, Wolverine's dealing with a lot of like trauma. I mean, I guess can I tell you? Uh, can I tell you Shazam's uh, character flaw? He's a child. Well, I wasn't going to say that actually. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Have you ever heard of Steamboat? No. Do a do a Google search for uh, Shazam Steamboat. Okay, I do know Steamboat. Okay, yeah, I don't have to look it up. I thought about it for a second. I went, oh yeah, okay, yeah. I, I don't, he had a slave. Like, history with Steamboat is not good. 
Yeah. Uh, like somebody's saying in the chat, oh, um, you know, Wonder Woman's flaw is that she's an outsider to man's world. What? I never see that in any of the stories. Like, it doesn't come into play. Lobo uh, has character flaws, but there are there are plenty. I mean, like, there's one Lobo issue where he the Easter Bunny hires him to kill Santa Claus. So he wasn't the good guy in that one, I guess. Okay. Yeah, but you no don't more. need you don't need character flaws for a character to be good. You need the character to be good. Having flaws doesn't make them good, but you know they can. The crisis you can, on you can have a flawless character if it's last, good. You can have a well. No, I don't think you can. I think the whole point is if you have a story, the character has to have something to overcome. Yeah, uh, it can't just be oh I can't figure out how to punch this guy. I think in a good story, <laughs> it's like they're overcoming some inner turmoil. But or what, what, some, if, what uh, if their lack of flaws? What if their lack of flaws makes the story interesting? What if what if what if you're flawless, and because you're flawless, all the flawed all the flawed people become the 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 flaw, and the character has to like like well, I guess wouldn't that be uh the Omni in the uh the. the the Omni Man or whatever the hell that what's the Amazon version of the yeah, boys? Omni-Man. It's like the cartoon Omni Man. Yeah, he's flawless, right? No, he's not flawless. He's what? perfect. He's, what? It, he's perfect. Are you talking about his power level? I'm talking about his character. Omni Man yeah, I mean, is like. I mean, he's better than everybody else. I think that's flawless. <laughs> I don't oh, know watching the show. Correctly. Everybody else around him is flawed. Oh, he has a flawed ideology as, that he should. He has the right to as a nar- the as weak. a narcissist. Murder. As a narcissist, yeah. he's a flawless character. Oh. Homelander, Homelander has flaws. Homelander has mommy issues. Homelander's right. a little, a, 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 and that's his flaw. Omni Man has zero flaw. The world around him is flawed, and he Big tries flaw. to fix it, but, but he realizes it's worthless. And that would be a flaw to try and fix a worthless world. See, this is perfect because in the chat, Vicar Fly goes, "Superman isn't flawless. Kryptonite exists, and that is the difference between the so DC stupid. and the Marvel universes." Is that in the Marvel Universe, it's like, yes, these guys might have secret weaknesses or whatever else, but ultimately their weakness is their character flaws and their relationships. So what if they... DC, it's like their weakness is this magic gun or this, like, guy who can do a fucking thing, and it's like, yeah, but I want to know, like, about, you know, their family turmoil and so relationships. They kind of did that uh, with Injustice, right? Because they, they made Superman highly flawed where he yeah. was, like, killing people. Why everybody likes Injustice because it actually has characters who are, like, not just a bunch of fucking Boy Scouts. Like, we got to go fight Rockman. He's so strong. You know? Like, one of the best things about Reed Richards is he's a terrible fucking husband. He's a bad dad. He's like a bad provider for his family. He doesn't love his wife right. Uh, his kids are growing up wrong. It's interesting. But that's a crutch. Like you don't have to have a flaw to have a good character. You have it's, to. It's, you 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 think that because that's what you've been drawn to. Because I I don't want to say this, Vito. You're like the flawed version of me. Okay. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Someone uh, in the chat says G- K from Gantz is a perfect flawed hero. Oh, you guys got to read Gantz. All right, I'm going to pitch Gantz to you real quick. Yeah. So when you die in Japan, you might get sent to this uh, Japanese uh, apartment. And in the middle of the apartment, it's a big black ball. And it tells you, uh, you got to fight aliens. And if you fight aliens, I'll give you points. And if you get 100 points, you can come back to life. And you go, what the fuck? And it goes, here's a super gun. Here's a fucking super suit. Put it on. I'm teleporting you to some part of Tokyo right now to fight aliens. And then you fight the aliens. Oh, no. The aliens are shutting down. They're silencing him. Okay, we we missed part of that. Uh, Okay, I'm sorry. They fight the aliens. They fight the aliens. The point is some people get really addicted to fighting the aliens. Because when you get 100 points, you get three options. One is you can come back to life, which would be great. Uh, Two is you can bring somebody else back to life. If you get, like, your friend died, you know, you can be like, all right, I'll bring him back. Or third, you can trade, uh, you can get an awesome fucked up super weapon to keep fighting aliens. And some guys get super addicted to fighting aliens uh, in the in the middle of Tokyo. Also, you're invisible to normal people for some reason, and the aliens are as well. So people are like, why is that building exploding? And they don't know you're, <laughs> that you're fighting fucked up aliens. 
Uh, so at one point they have the Osaka mission where Is they get mainly about teleported. The movies? I believe some of this has been done in DC Comics. Yes. So at one point they get the Osaka mission. They made a whole movie out of the Osaka mission. Uh, where the, uh, the team gets sent to Osaka instead of Tokyo. And they're like, whoa, we've never done a mission in Osaka before. Who are those other guys with the super suits and the laser guns? And why are they shooting up heroin? <laughs> and a bunch of Japanese guys are just, like, shooting up heroin, and they're like, I can't wait to fucking kill aliens. I love killing aliens more than anything else. And they're all smoking weed and shooting heroin, and they all have, like, been through the ringer and gotten 100 points so many times. They all have, like, samurai swords the size of a building or, like, giant mechs. And then they're just chasing down these aliens, some of which resemble like demon women. And then they just start like, you know, uh, raping them because they're high on heroin. And Tokyo team is like, Jesus Christ, Osaka team is fucking hardcore. What's wrong with these guys? And uh, that's Gantz. It's invisible Japanese people fighting aliens to get points. That's pretty fucking crazy. Oh, dude, it's the best uh, comic ever made. And uh, it is the basis for my comic book, Super Killer, now available on Indiegogo. Yeah, uh, I stole a lot. From <laughs> stole do you a lot. think? Do you think that you'll have a second book out for Super Killer uh, quicker than Eric July got Ice Two out? No, uh, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, right now, my artist is real busy, uh, so it's okay. all about working with his schedule. Uh, yeah. In the future, I could do what I, Eric did and hire a bunch of guys in Argentina who have nothing else to do. But you know, I kind of went and found like an artist who was suited for the project. Yeah, uh, do you think the quality will... Uh, I found a guy who's in demand, who, like, has other people trying to pay him to make stuff, so... Yeah. Uh, but whatever. I think once we get this knocked out and he sees how much money he can make, I think, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to make future issues happen quicker. Nice. Don't forget, though, go to Indiegogo, check out Super Killer. You're gonna love it! You're gonna love it. Got some cool shit. Uh, shit, somebody asked some. Oh, someone says, I'm convinced Vito has read, like, two DC comics. Look, I've read the good ones, okay? I've read... Uh, what's the Superman? All-Star Superman? Sure. I've read Long Haul. Well, any of the Batman stuff doesn't <clears throat> count because all the Batman stuff's good because Batman is a flawed character. Like, we explore Batman's flaws. He's, he's a fucking... A psychologically damaged weirdo who can't get close to anyone because he's worried about them getting hurt. That's interesting. Okay, and he, but like and he has to know the foil to everybody, or else like yeah, he, he's he's ba basically the strongest character in DC, isn't he? Like he can he knows how to beat everybody. Yeah, well he's the he's he's got a plan for everybody, and that's yeah. why it's interesting. But like okay, so I can name you know the good Batman books and the good Superman. What's the best Wonder Woman story? There isn't one because they're all bad. Wonder I don't Woman. know. I saw this a Wonder Woman porn parody. It was pretty good. <laughs> okay, well that sounds good, but that's different. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman's a bad character. What's the best Flash story? Flashpoint? Again, that's just a Batman story. Oops. Okay, so that doesn't even count. A lot of the DC uh, characters uh, I like are kind of the more fringe ones. Like, like Sand. I, I like the like Sandman. Vertigo, if you do like John Constantine and Swamp Thing, that shit was all interesting. But DC doesn't do that shit anymore. Yeah. Kingdom Come is the best comics ever. Kingdom Come sucks. What's that Whoa. guy's name? Uh, Ross, Alex Ross, Alex Ross can draw real good. He can't write for shit. Uh, Damn. Earth X is interesting, but then it went off the Damn. rail. Dude, Kingdom Come sucks. You think King? Did you read Kingdom Come? I didn't. I don't read comic books. I watch the Barbie movie and compare it to the Matrix. That's literally all I do. I guess Alex Ross <laughs> did not write Kingdom Come. He just illustrated oh. it. Uh, Kingdom Come is what if some dude with horns killed the Joker and made everybody really sad. <laughs> and, uh, it's just not interesting. I mean, it's cool watching all the the art's really good and it's cool watching all those guys fight. But the actual story is just nothing. It's a nothing. I wish they had a, a Joker comic book where the insane clown posse joined the Joker and took down Batman and the Wu-Tang Clan. That'd be fucking dope. I think that DC... I think, yeah, I don't know how you do a DC. Uh, just do a... Here's what they should do. Uh, fuck all the other characters. Just make a Batman universe. They fucked it up because they made a bad Batgirl movie. Go back to the... Go back, make a good Batgirl movie. Make a Nightwing movie. Make a Batman Beyond movie. 
Make a make a Teen Titans. Do we know the Batgirl movie was bad? Didn't did did they not release the Batgirl movie? Apparently, it's dog shit. Well, have you seen the ones they have released? Maybe it's good. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, based on the ones that they have <laughs> released, I'm gonna say it probably was way worse than the ones they've been putting. Are out. you? Do you think? Do you think maybe they don't know what good is? I, I heard the one that they they didn't release has uh, Brendan Fraser in it. it Academy Award Brent winner Fraser. Brendan Fraser. How could that be bad? <laughs> a lot of ways that could be bad. There's a lot of ways. Name one Brendan Fraser movie that was ever bad. Oh wait, uh, Monkey Bone. <laughs> Fuck. That's not fair. That was a Chris Kattan movie, wasn't it? I don't actually remember Chris <laughs> Monkey Bone. Or what's what was the name of it? Shit. Uh, I'm looking up his movies. There's like one. Wasn't he in like Kangaroo Joe or whatever the fuck? Kangaroo Jack. Kangaroo Jack. No, that was uh, Anthony Anderson and uh, the Jerry O'Connell from uh, Kangaroo Jack was not my guy. People are saying it was Monkey Bone. Bedazzled was good. Encino Man, classic. 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 He's in the Jesus. Let's see. Uh, what else? The Nut Job, he did a voice. Uh, oh, was, was this? Girls. Cartoons, I don't count. Because his face isn't selling the, the film. I don't know. Was Inkheart the one? There's some there's some DS game, and it's like the only N Nintendo DS game that has Brendan Fraser on the cover. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to buy it just for that reason. Uh, hmm. Brendan Fraser games on the Nintendo DS. Okay, there's three Brendan Fraser games according to this video. Uh, Mummy 3, Inkheart, and Journey to the Center of the Earth 3D. Inkheart. That's what I want. Inkheart from the Nintendo Monkey DS. Bones was golden. TF you mean? Thank you, Mighty Five. I think Vito is just obviously has only read two DC comic books, and he obviously does not watch all of Brendan Fraser's movies. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> I always kind of hope they'd make a Crisis on Infinite Earths movie series, but that'll probably never happen. They did it for the TV show. For Nobody the watches the shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't want right. to watch it. Vito. Vito. Yeah. Right here, right now, on the spot. What's the biggest problem on Infinite Earths? Oh, my God. This is a comic-specific question? Yeah, what's the biggest problem on Infinite Earths? Infinite Earths. It's uh, the anti-monitor. That motherfucker. <laughs> God, that design looks so stupid now, the anti-monitor. <laughs> you, think, you think those things were his teeth? Those weird, like, bristles or whatever? I'm not even. How could it be stupid? He's he's the evil counterpart to the monitor, anti-monitor. <laughs> so stupid. Right. Uh, did you ever read the one, the Crisis, where Superboy punches reality really hard? I used to own that one. <laughs> That's how they rebooted uh, the uh, DC universe. Was that Superboy got really pissed off about being Superboy? And he went and he found the structure of reality and he just started punching it. And it fractured the entire DC uh, timeline. I like how now they're, they're like, let's just use that same angst, but make him bisexual. <laughs> Dude. Uh, okay. So, like, here's how you know DC. Like, that's the other thing. DC can't learn lessons. Is It's like, okay, you put out Watchmen and it was great. And why was Watchmen great? Because it was about a bunch of characters who are deeply fucking psychologically flawed in different ways and that makes for compelling drama <clears throat> and then instead of integrating that into their other characters they just made Watchmen sequels <laughs> you see they're making an animated Watchmen movie and you're like please don't just stop huh. stop kicking Alan Moore's corpse the man isn't even dead yet <laughs> yet yeah, was has it? he done anything good recently Alan Moore or watch or DC Alan Moore has he done anything good recently the last good thing he made was The Lost Girls, which was about, uh, what do you call it? Wendy from uh, Peter okay. Pan. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Reminiscing about all the time she got fucked by the Lost Boys uh, when she nice. was 12 years old. Gotta uh, walk. Wait, shit. I don't, I don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alan Moore made an illustrated, it's, I, don't, I guess it is a graphic novel, 
And it's about Alice from Alice in Wonderland, Dorothy from Wizard of Oz, and Wendy from Peter and Wendy, just reminiscing on all the times they got fucked. And, uh... Let's see. So Wendy, darling, Wendy's sexual escapades meet when she meets a homeless teenage boy named Peter. Peter follows Wendy and her brother's home and teaches them sexual games. And the siblings begin begin regular meetings with Peter and his group of homeless boys in the park for sex. These encounters are watched by by the captain, a.k.a. Captain Hook, a co-worker of Wendy's father who later hires Peter as a male prostitute. And brutally rapes Annabelle. I don't like this. This is what Alan Moore's been up to. <laughs> I, I think Alan Moore watched Sucker Punch and said, I got to get another Snyderverse check. <laughs> uh, God, Alice, Alice from Alice in Wonderland just starts getting fucked at 14. Jesus Christ. Actually, and that's what the guy who made Watchmen uh, put out. You know, uh, I don't know if you're actually allowed to own this book in America. <laughs> I think you are. I've never read it, thanks. Uh, well, I don't think I want to read it. <laughs> well, I have to read it. I don't want to read it. I have now to I read it. I kind of feel like... If, if I'm going to play the captain in the, the sequel uh, to <laughs> Sound of Freedom... Oh, God, the Wizard of Oz chapter. Okay, so Dorothy, well, trapped in a house during a cyclone... So these are all takes on the classic tale... Uh, She begins masturbating and experiences her first orgasm at the age of 15. She then has sexual encounters with three farmhands. She she refers to as the straw man, the cowardly lion, and the tin man. Uh, Okay, so Dorothy's just fucking a bunch of farm boys at age 15. If Hollywood did this, they would all be like up age three or four years. I don't know why they do this. When people talk about Alan Moore, it's like, Alan Moore, comic genius. Possible pedophile, <laughs> probable, or or an imp- he's an impossible pedophile. Yeah, well, because he's yeah. go ahead. Maybe, maybe he's writing this. Maybe he gets off not to the girls being young, but being in the mind of a young girl herself. Because he's writing the he's writing the characters as the victim here. When when they wrote Watchmen, they they just borrowed they. They had acquired like Blue Beetle and Captain Adam and Nightshade and all them, and they they were just going to use those. But then they were like, DC was like, but then we won't be able to use these characters after you're done writing this book. So then they had them create yeah. new characters based on the uh, Charlton Comics uh, characters that they had like acquired. Yeah, he just made his own versions of them, yeah. and uh, and then they just kept using them anyway. Did you see that they integrated fucking Dr. Manhattan into the core DC universe? No. Like, he, he talks How? to Superman. You didn't see this? They did a whole fucking event. The idea being oh, that... Oh, I do that remember that. At the end of Watchmen, where he goes, I'm going to go create my own worlds. He went and created the DC universe or <laughs> took it over or some shit. It's the dumbest fucking thing in the world. Has he met Captain uh, Adam? Has Dr. Manhattan crossed paths with Captain Adam? I think Captain Adam might appear in... I mean... I don't know if they put him in that book or not. Captain Adam would not actually stack up to uh, Dr. Manhattan, though. But it was like, just don't do that. I don't want Batman to meet Rorschach. Like, this does not need to happen. It should be a separate, I do want, standalone universe. I do want Comedian to meet Peacemaker, just so yeah. they can have a podcast together. Comedian's dead. Yeah, but they can go back in time. There's time to flashpoint him back, so Comedian and Peacemaker have a podcast together. Did you ever read Negan the, and John uh, Cena. Yeah. They had the before Watchmen comics, which was all like what happened prior to Watchmen, but it doesn't make any sense because the comedian was good friends with John F. Kennedy. When then, but then in the comic, it's like highly implied that he killed John F. Kennedy. So he's a gun for hire. Like he's the comedian. That's the joke. If he doesn't night. do it, somebody else will. So he takes his friend out with uh, in the, 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 the kindest way he can. He knows people he can't de- save him. People are defending the Watchmen crossover Doomsday Clock in the chat. No. No, just <laughs> leave Watchmen alone. Just stop touching it. Okay? You know when you got, like, a, if you have a perfect, beautiful thing, okay? This is this is the problem with all media now. If you have a perfect, beautiful, let's say it's a perfect golden orb, and it's perfect on all <laughs> sides, deemed by God to, to be a perfect sphere, okay, that gleams in the moonlight. And you can look at it whenever you want, but you can't touch it. Why the fuck does everybody just keep touching it? Just stop touching well, it. 
It's you know what happens? Thing. You know what happens? You know what happens when you mess with the Watchmen? Alan Moore goes and writes books about your favorite little girls losing their innocence. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get. Now you get. That's what happens when you mess with the Watchmen. By Alan Moore. Oh <laughs> God, I don't know what else he's been. I think he started I'm, writing. I'm like, gonna yeah. read Lost Girls. Don't announce it here. You're gonna get in trouble if you say that. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> put me on a watch list. You I'm probably get read, on a watch I'm list read and Lost try to Girls. read it. I'm, I'm, I mean, you know what? I'm my curiosity get, is peaked, but I'm gonna get the people who made cuties and the people who made Sound of Freedom, and I'm gonna read the Lost Girls so we can is make this, that film is this, adaptation. Is this the Mr. The Girl Book. Book Club? Yeah, that was the first <laughs> book. You gotta read. You gotta read about Wendy getting raped in the park by oh, no. Peter Park. Vito. Vito. Yeah. Vito. Yeah. Who watches the watch list? <laughs> A lot of guys in suits, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the we're gonna the, the Lost Girls, aka the Cuties of Freedom. Who watches the watch list? I do. Being, I do being believe. rolled into production. So you guys saw that song that went viral, where he's singing about uh, you know, the rich men north of Richmond, and how uh, you know. What is this? On. You haven't seen this this new country singer guy who showed up, and every conservatives. Pretending that he wrote the Jason best Aldean. No, it's a new guy. What? There's, there's, there's a newer, how, new super yeah, conservative. But, yeah, yeah. And his song's all about how politicians are pedophiles and fat people on welfare don't deserve anything. And everyone's Whoa. going, oh, he's a hero of the working class. And I go, I don't know. I think if you're on welfare, you're part of the, and oh, whatever. Uh, anyway, based on that success, I don't, I think we're going to enter an era where like, uh, like, I don't understand how there's not, like, a big movie. Or, like, Sound of Freedom was big. I think we're going to start getting, like, some, like, pedophile hunter movies. Like, big budget ones. Oh, think, my God. Remember uh, How to Catch a Predator? Yeah, I think that's going to come back, but it's going to be, like, way more intense. I think they're going to have, like, yeah, it's gonna... Catch a Predator and lock him in a Saw-type trap. Where, uh... God, we should just do Saw for pedophiles. People would definitely buy tickets to that. And it's like, if it's a Chris Hansen situation... It's, it's probably going to happen. That's, that's that's the hook of the movie, is that you're watching the trailer, and it's like, a, to catch a Predator setup, and it's like, it's like, all right, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to call the cops or whatever? He's like, oh, we're not going to call the cops. And then a trap door opens up under the guy, and he goes down a slide, and it's like a saw fucking hostile situation where they just torture and murder pedophiles. Okay, I think this, he would uh, this... take a bunch of money. This is not this is not an idea that should be used in the real world. This is an idea that could be used in like a film. But you know how in Hunger Games everybody uh, fights to survive. Yeah, one pedo it's, gets to escape. It's it's, ha it's, ha it's not it's not pedos. It's it's people who are willing to give up their lives by going and hunting the pedos, and then they yeah. obviously go to jail for the rest of their life. But that's their like the, the, the idea is that. They're sacrificing their their freedom to yeah. take one off the street. And that's the film. It's like the reverse, the reverse not not Hunger Games, but it's like the uh, catch and release. How to catch a predator, catch and release. Yeah, if you don't get released. I think just based on the way media is going, that uh, everybody wants to be hunt. Everyone's dreaming about hunting pedophiles. It's like it's like the most oh, yeah. See for a for a young man now is like. If I caught one, oh man, the things I'd do to him. Why not There's, just make it real and just make him a, a movie out of it? There's two sides of fundamentalism in America: hunting the pedophiles and becoming them. It's sick. It's <laughs> sick. Uh, did you hear the guy from the Blind Side is uh, suing his parents? I I didn't see that was what happened. I saw a little teaser for it on the news. And uh, I didn't get to the actual meat of the story. He's suing the parents. What's he suing them for? For saying that you... they lied. They never actually adopted him. He said the <laughs> lawyer the paperwork, and that instead of adopting him, they like just like forced him to sign a conservatorship that let them take some of his money. And then they sold that fucking the rights to their like story of like, oh, we helped this guy or whatever. He didn't get any money from the from the book or the movie. They're like, I think Did they're he like, make it to the NFL? Yeah, I mean, he made NFL money, but come on. They made a whole movie about him. He should get some. He should get a piece of that. 
Probably made more money from that fucking Blindside movie than his uh, career. Maybe. Yeah, no, they, if they did him wrong, then I guess... Kind of ruins the movie. Pay it up. Kinda, well, I mean, kinda... did, did you see the movie? The only the only good thing about that movie is that whenever I get in a car accident now, I reach my arm across the person next to me so they don't die. Yeah, I was like, oh, I could do that. I'm the blind side. I'm a big, bl- I'm I'm a big yeah. Side. I'm like, I'm the blind side. I'm the big strong guy. I'll save. I'm better than a seatbelt. I just blind side for them, and then I save their life. That's the only good thing that movie ever did. Yeah, I did not see that. I don't watch these uh, white lady saving black people movies because I I just don't. Something about him makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> like, this big, dumb black guy couldn't have done it without me. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, white lady. <laughs> well, we got to make movies to make big, dumb white ladies feel like they could save a big, dumb black guy. Or else they, yeah, that's, they, that's they, or else they have nothing in life. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the reverse King Kong, right? Oh, my God, dude. What? Everyone, saying, please like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. We know, we know, we know. Yeah, we got that. Uh, everyone, please like the stream, and we're gonna wrap it up Happy in like. Happy birthday, Billy. Here, Ben, have some money. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap up in like five minutes here. If we want to do one last tip train, please do. Please hook us up with one last do a tip, tip train. train. Doo, doo. And guys, one more time, real quick. Uh, show show them this page. They're going to love it because you okay. guys can still get on. We are still taking late backings for the super killer comic. Yeah. I know I've insulted yeah. all the DC fans in the audience. Look, I think sometimes it works. Just a lot of the times it doesn't. It, um, it really is a cool looking book. Uh, the story looks freaking awesome. Dude, it's so man. I'm writing the third issue right now. So nice. there's so much stuff we're going to do. That's like a ton of fun. Again, the big problem is speed, but uh, I think once we get knock out this first one, uh, we'll get some assistance in there who can help us yeah. get the books out quicker. You know, it's a learning process. Obviously, I've never made a comic book before, but yeah. I put in the time to get the best possible artists, get the best possible art. Uh, I got some guys helping on the sides. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Go to Indiegogo. Check out Super Killer. Uh, get yourself a copy. It will. I'll say this. Uh, Eric July, all these people are buying 10, 20 copies. They're like, someday this is going to make me a millionaire. Guys, in 10 years, you're going to be able to sell that copy of Super Killer Number 1 for 2500 American dollars. That's my estimates. If you get a first edition copy of this number one issue, uh, you can only, you can, you're going to make a 2000x multiplier. Let's, let's say that. Why not? You're going to be rich. <laughs> You're gonna uh, be or you can just, super or you're just gonna get a pretty good comic. That might happen too. Well, this this money actually is gonna go to somebody who is uh, gonna Working. put it to great use. Yeah. They're not, not gonna, gonna buy a runner van with it. <laughs> they're not gonna buy a warehouse just to house the unsold comic books that he could have given you cheaper. <laughs> Did you see his stretch goals on the campaign? Are literally like a hundred thousand dollars. I buy myself a van. Happy. It's like that's not what stretch goals are. The stretch goals are for hey, your keep, back. Thank you. Happy belated. My stretch goals were like you get these cool trading cards if you scroll down. Like every every you know thing we hit, I added more trading cards, and they're free. You get a free bunch of trading cards. Uh, Eric buys himself stuff, so uh, they're pretty far down the page. Oh, okay. So yeah, good work, Eric. We Here's have real one. stretch goals. Yeah, there's one. You'll see the whole gallery real quick. There's some cool ones. Yeah, they look like the the classic yeah. Marvel trading cards, like the design. And there's some of them. artists you may you may uh, recognize, including Autistic Boobs. Mint Salad has made a yeah, card. Mint Salad. Uh, we also have Shibi Jeebies, aka Mr. Girls, uh, beloved, has stepped in. Oh, really? Yeah, we have a card from her. Yolo Swag Studios. I don't know if you guys follow him on Twitter. He's hilarious. Nice. And you might even have one drawn by me. Can you believe it? Uh, that that last one is done by this guy who stole your username. Well, some asshole, fucking guy. And how how, how now does I'm he curious. Get your username, but you get banned. I'm curious which <laughs> one gets unlocked at eighty. Because I see there's one. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. There's one way to find out. 
Uh, we're uh, forty five hundred dollars away from eight grand. So you know we get a couple sales every week now that the main campaign's over. I think when the book's ready to launch, we're gonna publicize the page again. And go now's the time to get in. Uh, but if you lock in now, you will make sure you get a first edition copy of the book. I know people like to get the first edition, so get it now or rather than later if that, if you're a collector and you want to get the uh, the first edition book. Once I print it again, it's going to not say first edition anymore. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, tip train, guys. Tip on, train. One yeah. last time. Uh, after ap- after the show ends here, uh, for all of the patrons, we're going to be doing a booking committee where we decide some of the details of our Patreon shows that will be happening before the end of this month. So everyone, everyone that's five dollars and up can watch the stream where we discuss it. Everyone twenty five dollars and up can actually join the call in our Discord and talk to us directly while we uh, make some of the final decisions on this. Oh yeah, you have your brilliant input placed in. Yes, I'll mention once more this Friday. Destiny will be appearing on the biggest problem in the universe. Come on by youtube.com slash biggest problem. It's going to be a wild show. Tip train. Woo, woo, woo. I was going to make a comic book about a guy with yo-yo powers who goes on local news and saves the city from an evil super gay (laughs) Nick Funes. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. Hell yes. Yes. While we we try and stretch out the last minute donos, which uh, really uh, will be important, you guys. You got anything to say? Let us say, Vito. I, 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 what's your weirdest sex dream? My weirdest sex dream. Uh, He's like, no, I shouldn't tell that one. No, I shouldn't well, tell that one. <laughs> I think there was one where I was gonna have sex with my mother, and I was like, well, that's not a good story. <laughs> were you? Were you Christian? Like, Wait, that's not the weirdest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I think luckily I woke up before that happened. Uh, no, it's usually just like, yeah, I think it's usually just my ex-girlfriend's about to sit on my dick, and then I usually wake up before anything good happens. <laughs> oh, well. Oh. Oh. Don't worry. I think she's going to get had... divorced soon, and then uh, and then we'll see what happens. I had one where I was having an affair with uh, is it Tom Hardy. Is that the guy who played Bane? Yeah. yeah, I was having an affair with Tom Hardy's wife, and I was in like this expensive uh, five star hotel. And he came up to the hotel room while we were in there, and I had to hide in the shower. And he and he found me, and I had to confront him and tell him, you know, that I I was banging his wife, and he was crying <laughs> in front of me, and I felt so bad for him. And I was I had to like I had to like talk him down. I was like, yeah, man, I'm sorry, dude. It's like nothing lasts forever. It was a very, it was a very weird sex dream. <laughs> Nothing lasts forever. <laughs> very weird. Yeah, I think I, 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 I had one recently, but now I can't remember it. I don't know if I was like about to fuck a buddy or something. <laughs> I remember waking up and being like, oh, like I was like really uncomfortable by it. But obviously, <laughs> you know, those uh, intrusive thoughts are seeping in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Yeah, it'd be crazy to have the fuck fucked your mother dream and Sigmund Freud's like sitting in the corner watching. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. Somebody just sent me some clips of Eric July's panel from Comic Con, so uh, I'll have to download that. I mean, the stupidest thing again about the Eric July thing is that he keeps making these videos. Did you see the video where he misspelled every word in it? The one that we were like ripping on. <laughs> no. Where he's like. It's like you got to have line of sight on your customers, but they spelled it on because it was like on the pay on the screen is like cool graphics, but he spelled site s i t e. I'm like, no, <laughs> like it's website like, site. Like, yeah, I'm like, that's not how you spell that. <laughs> and another one, he's like, as a creator, you need complete control, and he spelled control c o n r o l, and I'm control? like, that's con roll. That's not a word. <laughs> Hold on, real quick. I'll bring. I'm, I want. I need to show you this because I screenshotted it before he deleted the video. He oh actually deleted God. the video out of shame because of me. Out of uh, shame, dude. I, shame? I was like, this is why I don't think this guy can write. I don't. He can't spell. We know this. He like doesn't have a firm grasp of grammar. Yeah, take a look at the clips I grabbed before Eric July 
<laughs> took down this uh, video. Uh, so the video was called How to Be Successful as an Independent. I said, one way to be successful is to, uh, you know, learn to spell, have like an attention to detail, not put out a video where you can't spell half the, the words. Wow. These oh my God, God. That's the worst screen grab. Yes. The pause <laughs> game <laughs> here. Come drunk in that, that pause. There's some good ones. Uh, you need to you need complete control. <laughs> How did you miss this? Oh, my God. He's like, there's a lot of new opportunities, especially for indie film mocking. Oh, like, my <laughs> God. You're not, not doing good here, buddy. So, yeah, uh, it wasn't like it was just one spelling mistake. It was multiple in the same video. Yeah, because I was how like, many, oh, how many tags sure. were there in the video? This is three where they're like the 20? only five long i was oh like my god i don't want to cherry pick this guy but how does he not can he not spell does he not have a, an edit that's been the one thing is i'm like this guy needs an editor he needs a guy to go eric you can't spell you can't write just let me edit the words that you put down because they're all wrong uh like even his campaign for the comic it, you can't it's illegible uh finally somebody went in and like edited around because it, it had all these like Darren is a guy, and he's got a farm, and he's gonna fight this guy. And I'm like, this is the, these sentences aren't even in the correct fucking order. Uh, I think this guy has a ghostwriter. I think he's a big dummy, and I think at some point the house of cards falls apart. But we'll see. I don't. I'd never underestimate the buying power of idiots. That's true. And, but that's what it was in the '90s, man. Like in the '90s, they put out all these comics, and they fucking sucked. Like young blood and shit, but everybody was just like, "Oh man, but if I buy like a hundred copies of Young Blood number one, I could sell them someday and pay for my kid's college education." Yeah, uh, it literally feels like we're back in the '90s speculative era of idiot comics, uh, which is why None you of should these... buy a copy of Super Killer, which will be worth twenty five hundred dollars in the future. Yeah, if you buy ten copies of Super Killer today, in ten years, you'll be able to buy a home. Oh, you're gonna be able to buy a good home with one of the ones. Yeah. With a I'm pool get, and a and a I'm dungeon get a series. That's the goal. We're gonna get an animated series. Uh, we're gonna have the lunch. We're gonna have the merchandising. You're gonna have toys. You're gonna have lunch boxes. And uh, this is gonna. You be already big... got tchotchkes. Oh, we got toys and tchotchkes. I'm jumping ahead. I got tchotchkes. You got the tchotchkes. I love tchotchkes. There's no <laughs> point in making this shit. See, I'm also mad. That's the other reason I'm mad at Eric July. Shitty tchotchkes. What's the point of making a yeah. comic book if I can't get like an action figure or a lunchbox or some pens? There's no good ice on merch. All he's got is like t shirts. Nobody wants a t shirt of a fucking comic book. He needs more. He's got the new book. All right, my book, I give you a whole thing of trading cards. You know what he gives you? A bookmark. A bookmark. Who wants a bookmark? <laughs> what is it, the Scholastic Fun Club? Who wants a book? Well, average reader. His average reader is going to take about four or five sittings to get through that pile. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. <laughs> They're going to need that. <laughs> I'm mad that he doesn't have toys and sh and fucking trading cards and all. Like that's the cool shit. That's oh no, he does have trading cards, but they're a hundred dollars and they suck. A hundred dollars for like <laughs> trading cards. What a fucking ripoff. This guy's a scam artist. Drives you crazy. Of course, Sam Lee. He's the next Scam Lee. Sam Lee. Well, uh, one copy of Super Killer will be worth as much as 10,000 copies of ISA. Uh, and that's the bottom line. Yeah. Look, here's the deal. Buy a copy of Super Killer right now, hold it for 10 years, and you'll be able to trade it for the company Eric July built off of Ripiverse. Someday. Just one copy of the Super Killer. Here's what you're going to do is someday you're going to go, I have the first comic book made by Vito Giswaldi. And people are going to go, oh my God, that guy who blew up all those federal buildings? <laughs> and go, yeah. <laughs> all right? And you're going to be able to sell it for the macabre factor alone. Boom. I thought they'd say, oh my God, that guy that got assaulted by the guy who rebooted Frasier? <laughs> <laughs> Big cat. I think the Frasier reboot might be dead. I hope so. I, I, I don't know. If I I'm pretty so sure not. it was filmed. I'm pretty sure they shot all of it and it's scheduled for release this fall. Out. Pretty all sure. Right. Well, once it once it launches, we're gonna hit it. We're gonna hit it hard. Oh, it says October first release yep. date. Yep. We're gonna hit it hard on Paramount yep. Plus. 
I'm gonna watch. Go to out there every day and go. Hey, did you know the lead writer uh, <clears throat> beats up comedians? Like, I'm a big fan of Fra- like the original run of Frasier, and no one from the original, almost no one from the original show wanted to come back to do the new one. There's Kelsey Grammer, and then there's the woman that played Lilith. She's gonna be on it, and then there's everyone else is new. There's no Niles. There's no Niles. There's no Daphne. There's no Roz. Obviously, there's no Martin because he died. Um, there's the, the, what do you his, call it? Uh, he says, and, and the guy who played Niles is like rebooting the show is a fucking mistake. What are you doing? <laughs> we'll see. I they they they're bringing it's back. It's not going to be good. They're bringing back his son, but they have a different actor play. They they don't have the guy who played the kid. Uh, coming back, they have like a new actor to play Frazier's son, and he's going. He's leaving Seattle and going back to Boston, so they might all find... these reboots. Yeah, all yeah. these reboots are fucking terrible. I was wondering if they were gonna pull in some of the old Cheers actors since he's going back to Boston. Ted Danson, you'll see some Ted Danson. Probably, sure. probably. Ted Danson's got nothing better to do. <laughs> Yeah, so we are going to wrap up this one. Vito, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah thank you. you. It's always great to have you on and have uh, the conversations, the, the fun conversations that piss everybody off. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see how many clips get on Rip a Goldpost. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. All right, well, Joe says he heard Fraser's reboot's going to be in Chicago. Nope, it's in Boston. Boston. They go back to Boston, and that's why Lilith is on it more often. I've read the. I've been. I've been keeping an eye on what it was going to all be about, and yeah, Fraser goes back to Boston. You think Make- Fraser's going to end up at January sixth? No. <laughs> That'd be great. Ay ay ay. All right, guys. We will see you next time we'll be back on wednesday our next show's on wednesday joe got me an awesome gift basket of fruit and snacks for my birthday it was so sweet joe thank you joey sweet boy joey good night everyone have a good night good night in the beginning there was nothing and then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. From the strangest corners of the internet. Gonna get TP'd by Billy and Ben. You know where you can find them at. Get ready cause they're gonna kick your... Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken peasants, drunken peasants.